Who, wait, Mr. A. You, Mr. A. Welcome to the Wednesday Club. <laughs> Hi. Hi. We're back. Hi. We're back. We're back. Those two are back from the desert. Mr. Dugan is back. He's back from the desert. I'm back from a, like a metaphorical desert. <laughs> Describe the metaphorical desert. It's very dry there. Bleak. Drier than my <laughs> redhead. Boy, I really got a lot of sun this year. It's just a yeah. monitor, don't worry. Uh -huh. <laughs> you all look fine. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Our special guest today is Jerry Duggan. Uh, you you, he's been writing everything mm -hmm. at Marvel for a few years now. I, I've been very lucky in assignments and collaborators and yeah, for the last few years. Uh, I really, I blundered into the Deadpool business and <laughs> Uh, managed to make a career of it, so uh, you I'm you lucky. made a fantastic career. Like I was telling you before the show, the uh, your your issue twenty, the suicide issue was. Oh, thank you. One of the most poignant comics I've read in a very long time, and it's one of the issues where I was like, I saw the full potential of Deadpool, and it hooked me. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, and and Matteo Lali and uh, our our colorist were so good on that. I think that was Guru EFX, but they. You know, I, I, I turned that one in and I, I um, had said to Jordan, our, our editor, uh, I go, I, you know, this is kind of a one-off in between a larger story. I just, uh, I wanted to try it as uh, an experiment because I had sort of sold Deadpool a little short. You know, it starts with the sort of the classic Morrison mm. uh, Superman saving mm -hmm, the woman mm -hmm. on the ledge. And I was like, boy, she was very lucky that was not Deadpool. And then I was like, you know what? Uh, what I'm, I'm, I was like, let's just try this as a, an, a thought experiment. And, you know, it, I, I just am de I'm like a dungeon master f for this stuff. They sort of figure their own way through it. Go on. And, and, uh, yeah. You said the, the you correct said, building. Tell, you tell said me, the tell right me, word. Tell me about your process. Well, I, I, I don't always feel like uh, I, I necessarily write the heroes. Uh, I, tr like, I'm... I'm like the the Lorax that will speak for the evil, <laughs> mm. and then they sort of like role play out of it. But I don't know if that makes me sound crazier. You are actually me. right at home here. here. You, are, yeah. you are weirdly so on brand right now for so, this building. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, I think Deadpool could save this poor soul, and uh, uh, he did in that issue. Maybe not in another universe that issue has a much sadder ending. A terrible but, what if. But it, but it was. No one ever gets around to. Yeah. The, I'm what sorry. If, yeah. What if. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unpublished that issues that we don't talk about. It's yeah. The one that made. <laughs> what if we never publish that issue? Oh. Uh, no. Uh, so it was fun. Uh, but it was nice. And that is uh, just a comic be because of the subject matter that um, I do see from time to time just sort of show up. Someone's always finding it. Uh, and sharing it, and that's cool. It, it, it's such a good example of how that character can be used in ways that people may not immediately think of. Like it's, it's just finding a way of stretch, uh, stretching and broadening that character in a way that I definitely would not. Deadpool is not a character I would gravitate to in my normal life. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I only read Deadpool really because of. Well, kind of. I, I don't know if you're on board with this too. Or Deadpool wouldn't have been a book I would have picked up if it wasn't for friends who were like seriously. Yeah. It's Who a, knew it? Not an auto buy for me. Um. <laughs> no, but it's uh, it, it, it took friends really showing me like what that character is capable of to get excited about that character. And and just to back that up, when we did a, a few months ago, we did an episode on Deadpool, and our friend Corey Jandro showed us and uh, uh, joined us and specifically told the story of that issue of oh, yours. Oh, cool. yeah. Um, to explain sort of just how genius your uh, how many years of Deadpool was it now? I'm still not a fan of Deadpool, by the way. <laughs> Here I am. I'm, uh, no, uh, I, I did, uh, bless you. I did. Uh, I did seven years. Whoa! Wow. Which is crazy, but um, seven years. It's almost hundred issues. Oh uh, well, yeah, actually, because of our accelerated publishing, oh. it's actually Marvel sneakily more. moved to some kind of weird calendar so, a while back. It's very confusing. Well, what, what was my, fun? My calendar release calendar now. <laughs> Yeah, what was fun is in success, they, they just were like, go for it. So we were, I think, began at 18, and we roughly stayed at about 18 a year, but some of those issues were larger than others, and then Yikes. we had miniseries, so like, I, I think there's around 100... And 25 or 40 total issues that Holy I did. Holy cow. Whoa. But like, depending on how you count them, maybe you don't count all of them. <laughs> but did you write them? Because you should count them if you wrote well, them. Well, I wrote them, I wrote them or I co-wrote them. But like, if you were gonna, like, like, I don't know how you count Hawkeye versus Deadpool. Sure. <laughs> 
it's canonically happened. <laughs> Uh, but but I uh, I don't know if like the Deadpool purist would go like I I enjoy that doesn't Hawkeye count Deadpool so. Hawkeye versus Deadpool. I did <laughs> I did that one was very strange because that one was um, one that I challenged uh, myself to write that as a sitcom so like I, you I got that vibe <laughs> I got that vibe you couldn't though in my mind the rule was like Shield was there at the top of it but you. They couldn't be on the helicarrier, mm -hmm. so it was like down in like the street, and so it all just had to sort of be you like were feel like, you're like you, we get three locations. You get three locations. <laughs> There's only one day on the Fox lot to do the New York stuff. <laughs> on a bottle issue. <laughs> gotta get it. I was about to say right. like gotta do a bottle issue. Yeah, they, I mean <laughs> do a bottle issue. they play video games. Like oh. that was the uh, uh, that wasn't the pitch. I wasn't like let me no, try I, this. I want to do Deadpool bit. and Hawkeye. Yeah. I, 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 I came for the Hawkeye, but I, I stayed for the Deadpool. I will. There say. were weirdly a lot of people who uh, was not the intent. Uh, but yeah, a lot of Hawkeye fans were like, "Oh, this is this is cool." Like, uh, I didn't know that I could like Deadpool. It really, it was it was yet another it was another nail in that coffin of like, "Well, I guess I'm reading Deadpool now." <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No, like you, you but like, an earnest compliment. You really did bring a lot more like nuance and sophistication to the character. Like Joe Kelly and you know uh, Christopher. Priest, oh, priest, sure. Like, and, like and blew him up and like, oh my God, look at all the fun that you can have. But then you brought him back down to earth and was like, yeah, we can have fun with him still, but we can also make him human and give him actual stakes and actual I, drama. I, and I feel like I get uh, wrongly a lot of the credit because there was so much other interesting Deadpool going on where, uh, you know, Jordan, my editor, was the guy who was sort of masterminding all that stuff, posting was co-writing with me at the time and Rick Remender was working mm. with him on X-Force and like, you know, there was this great renaissance that like... deadpool -assance? D Yeah, deadpool -assance. and I was like, I was oblivious to it. At ni 19, I, uh, I kind of quit where I was yeah. like, I don't, like that was a solid year of Deadpool. Like I can, I don't know that I need more than that. Do you need more than that? Like I was like, that's we're good, I mean, right? I never, like, I never keep need going. More. It's and whether I, like, I want oh. more is a whole other question. Yeah. And and that the, X Force run. The whoa. following six years were the bonus round. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I had that was a Street fun. Fighter breaking I, the car. I was I was thinking of a Marvel editor walking in and says, "It's good work. We'll most likely cancel your book in the morning." <laughs> <laughs> well, six years. <laughs> you know, when you talk about Deadpool, you really do have to like have that long memory because. So many times those creators uh, were not sure how long they had. And then even when they were told how long they had, they had to pivot to shorter runways mm -hmm. because the sales were just not there. So it's uh, on their back that that crazy run happened. You know, like by the time it, it got traction and people read the stories and they, they got through Joe's stuff and he was the guy. I mean, I inherited a movie character from a long popular run that Dan Way did, and he had a video game. Mm -hmm. They were threatening the movie, but they but the video game was going to happen. So I I rode him around like a jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> like, Deadpool oh. would approve of that. I think. Yeah. 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 So so we should we should start with I mean before we even get into that was our too topic. Interesting that was too interesting. Yeah. To stop. We 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 have to we have to you have to say the thing you say every time we have a guest. You have to ask. Yeah, go ahead. I know it's your. It's, we okay, love Okay, it is my it. favorite part. I'm gonna please, briefly please introduce what out. we're gonna talk about. Uh, yeah, because no. we haven't even really said hi we to the Wednesday. Club. We have like, been we in just... our own world. It's been so weird. <laughs> They're still in the desert. We were reading. Macro. We were reading comic but, uh, books in the desert. Your life model decoys mm -hmm. made it back mm -hmm. fine. It's, it's their Jacob's <laughs> ladder. They're like <laughs> stuck to a cactus, like, filled with <laughs> spirits. <laughs> Uh, Things happened. But we are back on the Wednesday Club, and we are very excited because we went back and forth mm. asking what you might want to talk about, and you picked something that we were very excited about. Uh, Can I do it without the glare? Uh, yeah, so, we'll so the, here, put it right there okay. on the blue mark. And lift it, and we'll have a, ah. uh, there'll be a we'll camera. There we are. Yes. Yay. That is uh, woodwork. It's I. It's a, the, uh, a big uh, retrospective of uh, Wallace Wood's work. I don't think he liked to be called Wally. Uh, that, that's the yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's all. but that's him Wally all I Did Wolfstein ever just called not him. Care? I think he was like, ah, Wally, uh, give it to Wally, Wally, and he's like, I'm Wallace. And Marie called him Woody, so I guess that's. Woody, a, Woody I think he was okay with, from what I've been reading. Yeah, same. And he might have been one of those people who just let people call him something he didn't like, just so he could stew a bit. But everyone calls him <laughs> Wally Wood. Fun, fun yeah, fact: no. My dad's name is Wallace, and he goes by Wally. Hi, Dad. Hi. Um, Hi, Matt's dad. 
I. Uh, well, like, <laughs> is he in? Is, is, I see him. Yeah, no, my mom and dad are in show. Okay, yeah. good. Just checking. My mom and dad. Do so this is a, a legendary artist of the gold, a golden age through the seventies. Spectacular to the seventies. Yeah. Yeah, he really he started illustrating. He began as a letterer, and, and which really shows in the work too later, as, when he's doing everything. Um, but but he doesn't really get uh, a. Uh, talked about enough, you know. I, I also thought uh, it was between uh, Wood and Ditko. Ditko mm. recently died, mm -hmm. but and and those guys were actually collaborators. You know, like yeah. they. That was the cool thing about New York back then. You know, there, the the comic business was absolutely New York centric because you had to have the pages to, mm -hmm. to in order to pass them along to be inked, and so these guys were running together and and actually, uh, Wood had a. a a comic series uh, with the King, with Jack Kirby, called Space Force, mm -hmm. which has come back around now. Uh, <laughs> Space, Force, Space Force, but um, but you know he he did uh, some classic uh, work on Daredevil. Oh yeah, uh, he redesigned he, he redesigned the suit. He redesigned the suit. Uh, he was also he just you know when you see Wallywood inks uh, that um, who you're looking at and. Uh, I, I had a, uh, this is going to be really name droppy, but I had a, an occasion to have a, a dinner at a, a, at a convention with Starenko. Really? And, yeah, and we bonded, <laughs> we bonded over, like, because, you know, I didn't want to, like, put him on the spot and I'm just talk about And just pause for one stuff. moment for our audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. Starenko is a, another classic artist. You know him from sort of his psychedelic uh, Nick Fury covers and some Captain America stuff. Um, a very distinctive style, left a huge imprint, uh, a big innovator in comics, a big comics historian. Uh, and you had to Comics historian, him. comics publisher, and an escape artist. Yeah. Who and Jack like a bodybuilder, Kirby. right? Oh, yeah. He was like, he was totally ripped up. Mm -hmm. cool. The story was mm -hmm. Jack drew. Uh, uh, Scott Mr. Free? Miracle, Scott Free. Based off of? Based off of Starenko. No. Yeah, yeah. Who, really? No, I, I don't know how. I don't. I, how apocryphal that might be. I want that, that story be. to be true. Well, yeah. let's, let's decide it's true. Yeah, let's <laughs> just decide it's we true. We heard it, it must but be a, true. But a fascinating uh, a man who, and so we started talking about uh, Wally, Wallace Wood, and um, yeah, he's always been a favorite of mine. Uh, Wood had a very sad end, and I think that's part of mm -hmm. the reason that we don't. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about him as much, much as yeah. as we could. Uh, you know, he he struggled with his demons and eventually lost to them. Mm. Um, but but uh, the work is immortal, um, and it's deep. And it's deep. It's and really deep. <laughs> it, it's it's. Uh, there's also something. I don't know how many of you out there are interested in making your own comics, but. Uh, there is, is this a good time to have it? I have it right here. We both pulled it up. Great. Boom. So uh, it's 22 panels that always work. Wally Woods, 22 well, panels yeah. that always work or, sh or some interesting ways to get some variety into those boring panels where some dumb writer has a bunch of lame characters sitting around and talking for page after page. I, uh, I literally full handed title. out. Yep, I handed out to. Um, I turned the sound too low. I'll make it brighter. But, but I like working with new artists and helping them break in. I got a couple of image books. Uh, that I'm working on. Yes, which and, we are definitely going to talk about. But but I share this right away, and I go, you probably have read about this or heard about this, or if you haven't, at, just take a look. At the moment, you can where get like me a page of from hell. out of a jam. Yeah, when yeah. when I write something boring and and dumb, you can make it work. <laughs> so they they have some. So he actually like they title a bunch of these in here. Yeah, it, it's it. Google it. Uh, take a look at it. It's he actually will will show you in a word balloon that he lettered. Uh, what exactly you're looking at and why it works big, and why it is better than what I called for. Big head, extreme close-up, back of head, yeah. part of head, down, profile, no background. Down shot. Uh, open panel, complete object, car or plane. Uh, I'll show off some of those while you're... Because Small look, figure, it's, it's, day. It, it, Comics should always move. You know, they should change. Uh, and I'm the first one to sort of fall into the trap of sometimes... I have some faces talking, and uh, you know this. This was uh, wood, just being wood, and figuring out how to, uh, you know, uh, fix uh, what we call fixing a writer's <laughs> mistakes. White Ben Day <laughs> background and silhouette. Talison, what's Ben Day? Uh, I don't know. It's Ben Day. I just read oh, it. Please it's a, it's answer. Ben Day dots are one of the like ways Thank to you. lay down a surface in old right. comics. Um, so it's sort of if you'd like. <sighs> 
I, I get a little bit confused about the difference between Zipatone and Bende and some of the other techniques. I feel like Zipatone was actually well, you like, cut it out, right? Yeah, because it, it yeah, exactly right. Well, it I, was a thing that you could just apply to it. Reflection. Yeah, it was like a, a a different kind of paper or something yeah. like that. If I you know, did it, my research and correctly. and and if you look at the old art too, you can really tell. You know, these guys were just doing it to do the work. Sometimes the art, the actual physical art, suffers from having white out on it or, or zip and oh, it needs to be zip-a-tons. preserved. It's so good. Oh. Um, I asked that's a whole other level nerdy, like a, a nerdier level of collecting is the comic art. Yeah, thank oh, God man. for the artist Pricing editions. Out. I haven't taken a single one home, but I'm so glad they exist. Yeah. I don't know where I would put them. They're mm-hmm. too expensive, but they're those beautiful full-size reproductions from original art where you can see the blue lines and you can see the white out and you can see the notes in the margins. It's amazing, and the notes are always weird and fun and, oh. Uh... Uh, Were there Kirby trying to explain what the panel is since he's doing it himself? Mm-hmm. I, it, I didn't even know that actually one of the first comic books I ever owned, I don't even remember how I got it, was a, it was a Vampirella that had was had the oh, Wally, uh, the Wallace wow. Wood uh, back back issue story of the uh, vampire Cleopatra. And oh the, yeah, Cleopatra, and how they. So I was like, I was like, this is one of the first comic books I ever read. I mean, like, I, like it's got a lot of, in, of of nudity in it, but like it's, but like it's beautiful. I think this is okay. Okay, this is hilarious because I have to side by side that page yes. specifically. All right, I'm with... gonna do it. I think, it, yeah, I think it's clear. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh. Uh, all right. Okay. So that's an example of a beautiful Wallace Wood page, mm. and. Uh, this will be a tangent we will get into later, but uh, one of my big heroes in comics who will get her own episode in future uh, mm-hmm. passed away mm-hmm. this week. Uh, her name was Marie Severin. We will get into it. She did everything everywhere and was wildly important, but one of the things she did that we've mentioned on the show before uh, was that she was in this one office. Uh, I, I can't explain that it now, see, so I'll right? just start by saying that she did mm. caricatures of the entire EC office, uh, as she yes. frequently did. <laughs> And this is what I had to side by side because this is her caricature of Wally Wood. It's her doing a flawless it's, Wally it's Wood. A flawless Wally. Wallace Wood. Yeah. A flawless a flawless Wally. A flawless Wally does no, sound. Little, uh, yeah. There there's also go. there's also this one that she did. This is Marie doing yeah. herself in there. Um, and then this was the, yeah the, her little office. Uh, little little office image of 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 Wallace. Oh, and I get that joke better than I did before I was reading about him. What the? Because uh, he says, best job I ever did. And he's coming in he's with like uh, a Rembrandt. Yeah, a Rembrandt. A Rembrandt. Oh, God. Um, uh, because he was incredibly good and incredibly painstaking and just working at this crazy level. That, that's what I loved about reading about the 22 panels is I hadn't realized that essentially he was it, always trying to get himself to take shortcuts, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. apparently he was not very successful in doing because he was just couldn't help himself from making it all full out and beautiful, yeah. but he was mm-hmm. trying to get himself to use shortcuts and, and cheats and things that the, might so up if, or ease the if process. I may, along the um, along those lines, uh, when he was when he did the Daredevil run, 63, 64, he only did like four or five issues, and I actually pulled a couple quotes uh, that we can get to later where he. Uh, was talking about uh, Wits End. It's the fanzine that he did mm-hmm. in the early '70s. I mean, that We're was all that over was the place too. I know, it, but it, but it is true. Wally did so much stuff uh, in every genre of, of comic book, mm-hmm. almost that he was doing westerns, romance, uh, sci-fi, especially his sci-fi. Really, still to this day, is gorgeous. Like the, the best. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, like, got some good. Oh yeah, here, here so, I've got one right here. And then the self-publisher. Yeah, so Wits End that. really is early. Yeah. Early self-publishing of yeah, the underground it, it was the image really revolution really before there was an I'm, image yes. revolution. So sorry, yeah, yeah. it really was yeah. like artistically. But the Daredevil stuff, I like. I have a quote where he was like, "Yeah, the Marvel stuff was just to keep bread on the table. I didn't want to do it." But even then, like, and if you look at the Daredevil stuff, you could it's still good. Oh yeah. But it's not like his sci-fi stuff or EC. It, it, it really is like Wally Wood phoning it in. But even then, he redesigned Daredevil's costume to what we have kept it. Yeah, and yeah. he invented the way to show radar sense for like the next 30 years. Mm. Yeah, like the circles around the lo- the head. That mm-hmm. was him. Like no one had done that before. Actually, I, f- I found the radar sense in one of his uh, eerie comic. Or oh, uh, that's interesting. Or in, one of uh, eerie. No, EC? it wasn't eerie. It was the it was the EC. It was the uh, weird fantasy. Uh, yeah, it might have been weird fantasy. I'll double check. But I found them, and I was like, oh, I found the precursor to what that was. So was who wants to pleased. remind our audience what EC Comics was? Well. Uh, I'll try to do it in in, uh, as short a way as possible.
possible. Uh, EC Comics, primarily a horror publisher, but they had a lot of interesting stuff going on, and the other publisher, uh, other comics publishers, ganged up on them uh, and deployed uh, the comics code against them. Uh, which basically sort of... I love the way you said that. Deployed the Comics Code against them. Yeah, you know, they they created the Comics Code Authority. It was very restrictive about what you could and could not publish. Uh, The the entire goal of that Comics Code was to put EC Comics out of business, which... And they were successful. They had some legitimate fear that there was going to be nationwide legislation making it illegal. Like they, sure. they were, they were afraid actual government censorship was coming, and they were all in a lot of trouble. But it is a really that punitive code. Yeah. Like it is, it goes right after EC. Goes after EC, and uh, you know, after that, there's a really weird period of EC that that Wood was a part of, and I think even this may have been where Frazetta did some work for them too where they actually switch to a prose model mm-hmm. of the same sort of story that had some, you know, uh, tipped in illustration. Uh, it was not comics. Uh, it did not sell well. And, you know, the rest is they, uh, history. The, the only thing that survived was Mad Magazine yep, because they Mad, switched yep. from comic mm-hmm. book form to black and white magazine, which didn't come under the code. Uh, and that sort of. And also so good. Uh, and he kept working. He did work for Mad, didn't he? He did. He did. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he did a lot of work for Mad. He worked for everyone, mm. uh, you know, and then he also had this really rebellious streak where you'll, uh, sort of as a warning here, I don't know uh, uh, 100% like, you know, um, uh, I don't think it's pornographic, but there's some adult comics. There are definitely did. some adult comics that he did. Uh, you know, I think he even did uh, like a 10-issue uh, series of sort of erotic sci-fi. Yep. Like. He was just doing the stuff that he wanted to see in the world that wasn't there. And, like, I still think that's awesome. Like, that's really <laughs> cool. He, he also, he, he, he apparently, I, I think he was eventually credited with doing the, the, uh, the famous <laughs> Disney poster, of which we will not speak of. But yes. I, yeah. Yes, I, I, I I'm learned... kind of an Imagineer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was reading about that this week. Uh, apparently, he never admitted to being he never the artist admitted of it. To but, it. But, he never admitted it. Uh, but because it was definitely, it was, it was, it reminded me of Evan Dorkin's series, How to Get Sued, Volume Four. Because <laughs> How to Get Sued, Volume Nine, which is just, just, oh, it's very, it's very seventies. So, it's got a very seventies yeah, vibe. Wallace was a guy who marched to his own beat. Uh, but if you uh, are partic- if you're interested in sci-fi. If you're interested in in uh, cr- old creepies and eeries oh. and uh, check uh, Wallace out, uh, he doesn't uh, get a lot of name recognition uh, today because he didn't create too many of the marquee characters. Um, however, uh, he influenced everyone that was doing uh, that work. So, and he's one of those artists that your favorite artists idolize. Yeah, it's uh. true. I forget sometimes actually that he's not necessarily a household name because mm-hmm. working at the shop I work at, which is so close to so many animators and so many artists, like right. he's a superstar in that shop. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, right. You know? It's a good point. Like the, you know, the the. So check him out. Uh, I, I, what were? Did you guys like have other, really like? I got some stuff to pull up. Oh, cool. I, I mean, like, yeah, before yeah. we do anything, though, I want to back up a bit. Sure. Because, because we're going to be a little bouncy. We were going to be bouncy today no matter what because... Because we're all so excited that you're here. We're, <laughs> well, I want to... I wanna, so the, I, I, we, we, we haven't asked the question yet. How did you get into comics? Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, I would say um, it happened at uh, newsstands and checkout lanes, places the comics used to be that they are... N- not anymore. Mm. Um, so uh, my old man used to. I we I grew up in New Jersey. He commuted from uh, Manhattan, and he would grab a paper for himself at the end of the day, and then a comic book from the rack. It was mostly Marvel because that's where. But like, really, was everything. Like I I read everything. I read Batman, read Superman, uh, read the Justice League, um, loved Spider Man and Hulk, and so that got me into it. And then. Um, I just kept reading. Uh, I, I there was a, a a comic shop in my town that it was a comic shop in quotes. It was mostly a card store mm. Mm. and uh, and mostly sports cards. And he didn't really know what he was doing because he didn't know the characters, didn't know the books, and certainly didn't know his. 
clientele. <laughs> so I was like, I will help you organize this because he was just, he's like, you kids like comics. So he's just buying stuff that he doesn't know what it is from garage sales. So I, in helping organize all of this stuff uh, when I was in seventh grade and trying to make uh, this collection presentable for sale, I just fell in love with comic books. I read everything I read. And I was able to like binge read Miller's Daredevil, Simonson's oh, Thor, oh my you know, God. Like, all, like in the shop, kind of on the clock. <laughs> um, so, Amazing. so that got me in, and we, and uh, going into New York and and going to shows and talking to the pros. You know, this is like late '80s, early '90s now, but and finding uh, how receptive they were to just nonsense questions that I would bring. <laughs> Um, What's a good nonsense question? We were I, like, I wanted to know of <laughs> Walt Simonson what you did first. I was like, do you write the script or write the or draw the book and then fill in the balloons and boxes? I mean, do you remember what he said? Oh yeah, yeah. I, um, get out of here, kid. You bother me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wheezy, get him out of here. Uh, <laughs> no, he's the <laughs> nicest guy in the world. With him and uh, Wheezy, his his wife Louise Simonson, who. Uh, also is a woman who uh, does not get enough credit. Uh, she created a, uh, characters like Apocalypse, mm -hmm. did a lot of mm -hmm. stuff in the X-Men universe, uh, and is someone that we should talk about more because in Power Pack, did she create Power Pack? Or did I'm she not sure it's the primary that sounds right. Who I'm not I know sure. she did a big long run of power it. Pack. Well, we should do a Power Pack <laughs> episode. But long, long story short, to get back to the Simonsons, that one in particular, <laughs> uh, Walt had just finished uh, his Thor run and began uh, his FF, his short FF run. <laughs> and uh, FF 337 was on sale and he was in a high school gymnasium in Spring Valley, New York and at a con. And uh, I just, I remember going like, I, I'm, I can't draw, but I wonder if there's something else that I could do in comics. And you know, uh, how, how do you do this? And uh, he did the coolest thing in the world. He reached under his desk and he um, opened up the, his artist portfolio that was there. And he took out, um, they were about this size, uh, the size of the book. He took out all the thumbnail pages for 337. Oh my god! So, which is a lot more valuable than actually looking at the finished art. Because you can see how it changes, you can see uh, you know, he'll make a note of himself and he's leaving room for the dialogue, which you have to do. Thumbnails in, refer to smaller versions of the panels where you kind of map out how the story's going to go. The and layout. Like yeah. Tiny, smaller versions where you'll either, some people do stick figures, some people do detailed yeah, ones, so, but yeah. Some, some people just will put, a, if it's a close up, just a circle. And we know it's Thor because there's two little wings. <laughs> Excuse me. And so we, we uh, and that was it. Like I understood then that it was a process that, uh, you know, was uh, uh, a, a living thing until you put it to the printer and it's organic and you yeah, fix it and there it's not perfect when it first comes out it's it's like exactly you look at the thumbnails you go okay i can bang this into shape i move things around here because you're not going to redo them unless there's a huge problem so like he'll just make a note like x out a panel and now there's more space or or there's another panel so seeing that was transformative um and and knowing that uh has it informed everything the, the way that I work because I'll write a script, the artist will go away and do the thumbnails, and then when when we discuss that, we go, that's great, that's the shape of the issue. Uh, the pencils come back, and then once the pencils come back, I'm free to repolish my work before it goes to the letterer because I can see everything now, see the face that wasn't there or the face that is there that I didn't necessarily call for and. You're not wasting anyone's time, and it, it becomes a, a process. And you know, especially over years with a team, you get good at it. So, you know, the sometimes the perfect Deadpool joke didn't show up until the Friday that it went to print, even though we'd been working on the issue for 90 or 100 days. <laughs> um, but but it, it took pros like that, pros like the Simonsons, and and going to uh, panel uh, panels at shows and meeting other people. You know, at the time, this is going to sound so silly uh, to the audience, but if we wanted an Iron Man toy, you were like wrapping a, a Spider-Man toy in yellow tape. It was a much <laughs> different world. It was world. a different time. It was, it was a, a different, different time. time. 
the dark time. Uh, <laughs> and I so a long, I long know, ago. Yeah, like it, it, it's. It, it, <laughs> It, 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 but but the fun, so the funny thing was these were not even comic book shows they were creation Star Trek shows oh that my had gosh. A, yeah. like a comic <laughs> ghetto where like it was like oh they're over there and I was just happy I didn't know what a Doctor Who was but like I was like I, I felt like comics was somehow above like just above the Doctor Who but nobody wanted any of us there <laughs> like we were just in the way of the Star Trek. Business. Do you remember the Shrine shows? Do you remember those monthly Shrine shows? I remember them. Oh. Yeah, they were, oh. I mean, for sure. Oh, God. <laughs> a creation Star so Trek fun. show was my first con. Mm -hmm. I said at mm -hmm. a hotel in Sacramento. Oh, uh, that's great. <laughs> I mean, and look, God bless them. I mean, they really did, you know, I think they did a lot of good for, for comics, especially, you know. Uh, here we are, comics one. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know what happens next. Maybe comics stink for a while, and then we have to build it up again, but... Uh, I'm very lucky to be doing You don't know how to deal with not being an underdog medium? It's weird, right? <laughs> like, like, it is so genuinely. Like, like, I feel like is the biggest brand, you know, Marvel and not the NFL now? Like, you you'd go. <laughs> you are literally writing a comic right now called Infinity Wars, yeah, uh, which is on the back of the record-breaking, like. The number one movie I, of I, all happens time. Happens to share part of a name with the record-breaking. And, and I don't know if you remember, yeah. like, I was I was an anime. Maybe. I don't know if you remember how much of an anime kid I was back in the day, but I was definitely. So you should tell the audience about this because they don't know that you know each other. Oh yeah, I was so, a clerk when you when you were a civilian. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. what? <laughs> I, I didn't know I'm that. I part you just of the audience. I didn't know that either. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we, we are both veterans of the Golden Apple comic book store. <laughs> oh my God! The original Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. The, the original Wednesday club. The Wednesday, Wednesday club. I'll see so we are days. daisies in your wake. <laughs> I love you, man. It's Wake so, daisies. How, I was trying to think of how long ago that was, because, I mean, like, it was the Hollywood... Were you ever at the Pico store? Or did, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember you being, like, like I having... I saw the, the Big Lebowski, and I came to California, because I was like, I can pay my rent and <laughs> dance just Oh, like no. Oh, 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 oh I'm God. so sorry. If I'm about half of all of Los Angeles, I have to apologize no, for that film. No, it was perfect. <laughs> I was like, this is great. I had been trying to uh, get into Manhattan, which even then was ridiculously expensive and uh, I had a buddy out here who I went to school with I went to Emerson College mm. uh, in Boston uh, and I was out about a year and was working jobs in New York and trying to learn how to write and then sort of going maybe I need to go to California and it was not too long before the phone rang and uh, I'll, I'll briefly run through my stupid origin story but I got on a plane came out here didn't have a car uh, got an apartment uh, with my buddy who was not going to make the full rent uh, and walked up and down Melrose and was just putting in applications like willy-nilly. Like I was like walking into like, you know, like secret head shops and they're like, retail we're slot not shop. hiring you. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, <laughs> Literally a real, a real store called Retail Slut. Yeah, re Retail Slut. There was like, uh, there was a Rockets. Like I Rockets. was like, I'd be a crappy waiter, but I'll do that. Yeah. And I kept, and I almost turned around and walked back the other way uh, at the end of the day, and I saw a golden apple, and I was like, "What the hell is a golden apple? Is that like the, <laughs> the like, I literally it was so big, <laughs> literally it was, it was a so big, big store. That, that, I was that, like, that original store on Melrose was huge. Yeah, it was two giant pieces, but I thought it was like a grocery train uh, <laughs> chain because <laughs> of apple. And I walked in, and uh, long story short, this is too long, but. Pride. We got time. No, there yeah. but, but, but <laughs> yeah, Bill on board. Uh, tried me for two weeks, the owner uh, at the time, uh, and that changed my life because that's how I met my uh, friends uh, who would later hire me to do some production work. That's how, and through them, I met my wife. But also, it was it just happened to be the time when uh, Hollywood's Eye was uh, really, f you know, Starting. looking towards comic books. You know, I'd answer the so this phone. This is like post Blade. Yeah, post yeah. Bla post Blade, but like, like uh, uh, I'd pick up the phone and they'd be like, uh, "Hey, can you get us twelve copies of the first uh, John Constantine?" And I'm like, "Yep, I guess it's going to Warner Brothers, right?" And like, <laughs> yeah, we'll call when it comes in. <laughs> and it got to the point uh, where uh, people would just walk in off the street. And ask what was an option. Mm -hmm. That's true. No, that was they absolutely still true. Do that. I'm sure that yeah, they do, right? I mean, they like, do. The savvy ones, the savvy producers, figured out how to get 90 days ahead with previews. 
-hmm. But now everything's online, so in pr the that's our solicitation. Uh, oh, how we and sell they to still pay attention build, to the good indies, do they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at yes. that. Look at that. Good. Well, good plug. Yeah, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. You're you're better at this than I. Am. Oh, okay. <laughs> we will be talking <laughs> about this in a bit, but we are uh, in hopes, I believe, of having a, a feature film for one of your independent works. Yeah, the um, I've been very lucky in that um, I've only done a couple of uh, creator-owned collaborations, but they have all um, been optioned. The real trick is to try and get one made. Analog right now has a lot of traction, which is really cool. This is Phil Noto? Yeah, this is Phil Noto. This is analog to... number one. Mm -hmm. yeah. the... I want to pivot back to your origin story, but let's talk sure. about analog for a minute just yeah. because I want to sure. tell us a little <laughs> bit about analog. Analog um, supposes that the internet is bad and uh, <laughs> we, don't use, we don't use it and want to use it anymore. Uh, it's a world where after a mass doxing, uh, the internet still exists, but you would not trust it with anything really important and so if you have some stuff that's really important that needs to get f from point A to point B you actually put it on paper and and put it into the hands of a ledger man or ledger woman and uh, they will move it uh, <sighs> where it needs to go in a briefcase uh, there's so it's part spy uh, it's like a lo-fi sci-fi future noir that has some romance and a lot of fatalities uh, it's you, definitely mature content warning, but you will immediately fall for <laughs> this gentleman, for his dad, for the oh. girl that we meet. Oh, uh, Una is so cool. We're going to do so much cool stuff. And uh, David is drawing issue six now, and there's such a cool, it's Una's comic is issue six. So we're in it for the long haul. It's an ongoing. And I um, had not really intended to try and get it out there for anything other than to be a comic. And I certainly didn't want to... Uh, talk about the comic before it was out because I didn't want to explain where the comic was going because mm. I was still, like, I was, because of the nature of the story, you know, the, like, we were working on it before the election and then the election happened and I, I rang David and I was like, we got to get this going because we're going to get overrun. And so he agreed. Uh, we started to uh, put it out there to publish and... You know, the, the uh, one thing leads to another. Long story short, um, Chad Stahelski, who's the um, director of uh, John Wick 1 and, and the new John Wick 3 that they're currently shooting, uh, it was uh, bought for Lionsgate for hopefully Chad to make. Knock on wood Ooh. from a great Knock on wood. Script. Knock on the Wednesday. I know. Yeah. Knock on wood. Knock on, Knock on Wednesday. Knock on um, Wednesday. And Ryan Condal, uh, who's a really talented writer, is um, off writing a script right now. Um, to hopefully have for Chad to read. But Chad's a big fan of the comic, and, you know, you never know. Uh, that's a hill that I have yet to climb to actually get something onto a screen. Uh, but uh, I think this one, uh, this, this one feels like it could happen. So, so Mr. Jerry, quick question. Uh, how, so we know how you got into loving comics, but how did you get into the business of writing comics? Is it related to that good time where phones were ringing at Golden Apple, or is well, that a separate story? Well, kind of. Uh, you know what? I, well, that was a, that was a hotbed at the time. I mean, like a lot was happening. A lot was world. happening there, but I was not sort of smart enough to be able to like sense that, like the parlay of being like, I know this stuff. Let me be your development guy. You know, like, <laughs> those words never crossed uh, my mind. But um, it was so funny, uh, you know. Los Angeles is a giant city, but Hollywood's a small town in it. Mm -hmm. and it it's a good way know, to put it. It sounds silly, but it's really true. And uh, so you see the same faces uh, every week, and these are your uh, customers, and you get to know them. You get to be able to pitch things that you think that they'd like. I think that's why we go to comic shops. They're like this oasis of culture in, in our horrible wasteland situation. <laughs> Plus, sometimes, if Jerry's in town, he sneaks in and signs the copies of things on your rack and doesn't even tell anyone, and you find them later, and you're like, oh, kindness strikes again! Uh, yeah, <laughs> or, I wanted to slab this, and now it's ruined! <laughs> um, Why did Jerry sign this as Stan Lee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Stan Lee. Yeah. Oh, man. He's, uh, but, but the, the, um... It's true, I do really do a lot of secret signing. 
<laughs> was I not supposed to mention that? No, it's okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I go in and, uh, you know, sometimes I'll sign books. So Sometimes <laughs> I tweet about it after. Nice. But, um, but you were saying shops are a good place to recommend oh, things. Oh, no, but shops are a good place to recommend things. And uh, I had... Um, uh, been friendly with a lot of Mr. Show was going on. That's a sketch oh. comedy. Oh yeah, yeah. Group that at the time was just concluding on HBO, so that HBO could get into the softcore business. They were like, <laughs> guys, you're losing your time slot. That's a wrap. We're gonna. We figured out how to triple our ratings. So the best sketch comedy show that America uh, had done to that point was wrapped out. But they were getting to do a feature, and so Bob Odenkirk and David Cross. Uh, we're writing with uh, Brian Posehn and Scott Aukerman and so many of these guys were, were coming into the shop and I would try not to embarrass myself. Uh, and then one day uh, Patton and Brian came in together Jeez. and oh, they yeah. were then talking to me and they were asked, they, they had a special request. They were wondering if I could help them with, with a, a TV show pilot that they had uh, where they had sold a show to, to um, Comedy Central, and they were very soon to be shooting it, um, but they didn't have anyone uh, at the production company that could make the set look real. And so I was like, well, I can do that, but if we're going to have trouble if it's a four-air pilot, meaning if this would need to run, we're going to need to clear it all. If Clearing means yeah. getting the right to use it. Getting the rights to use it. The reason we can't... stopped wearing other people's faces on T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Long, uh, and they were like, well, it's a four-air pilot, which means that th they wanted to, if it goes to series, this is the pilot. So uh, uh, Bill was really kind, Bill and, and Ryan and the Golden Apple guys. So uh, another, so Bill was at the time the owner of the Golden Apple. Yep. Uh, he was, if, if you guys remember my, my uh, scary, scary looking man with the yo-yo story, <laughs> uh, uh, way back in episode one. Uh, and then, yeah. and then his son Ryan, who 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 now kind of helped runs this. The yeah, Ryan, shop. Ryan, uh, and Sharon, and Bill. Bill's no longer with us, but um, his legacy lives on. Boy, and me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, but all. but but he was super cool uh, and said, "Sure, you can use." He had like a updated yearly this thing called the Libaphone, which was great, <laughs> but it had everyone's <laughs> contact was in there, so like. If you felt like casting a really big spell, you could like call Frank Miller. I did yep. not. I did not the feel like Libophone? doing that. The Libophone. So the Libophone, because it I just forgotten. was like everyone, like the, and it was. How was that spell? I, I, I literally, because once he, like, there was a time oh, when, like, I got a phone I call e from him. O and oh, you're gonna do like it. Like love, love phone. Like his last Libowitz. name was Libowitz. Oh. So, so he just, the Leibowitz like, with the Leibophone. But he did it updated. He like, had my number, and I had no idea how when I was, like, 17. I'm like, how did you get this? He was like, doesn't matter. I need a little help with something. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, and <laughs> it, every, everyone in there, like, you know, I, I, I started with guys, uh, men and women, that own their own stuff uh, because I thought, well, we're, we may not land a big fish. We may just have to make do with the... And, you know, once we had a couple of... Uh, Mike Mignola said mm -hmm. yes to allowing Hellboy, and we knew it would look real. And then Joe uh, uh, Joe Quesada came through with Marvel. So this was back in the day, like before it was uh, not so, that big of a deal. So it was, it, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like the set looked like a legit comic shop, like that I would love to like. I wish it were real. Mm. Yeah. No, I only have two pictures of it. But oh, I was gonna uh, say, is it is it like is like the comic it. book store equivalent of like of like the Friends apartment in New York, where like there is no apartment like that in New York. You, no, no one will ever live in an apartment that nice. It was too perfect. <laughs> but I got really into it. Like I was like really like I would put stickers on the door and then started to. This Shred is, the stickers. This is an amazing story. I, 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 look out for this when you're watching stuff. This might be mostly of interest because being on the shop side of this, I've dealt with questions like this so many times. And like, this is like a dream scenario where it's like, we never get all those yeses. No, but like, you'll yeah. notice there are posters for House of Secrets, the shop I work at mm -hmm. in uh, Chuck and Big Bang Theory, because they are going around to people being like, who will give us permission to use stuff that they own? Yeah. So that's how you end up with in those situations. Mm -hmm. But you guys got to actually make like a legit. We made made something that looked really real. Now, I, I don't think you could do it today. I think it would, you know, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be bugging Joe. Joe would refer it to the Disney lawyer, and then they'd go, who are you selling this to? And then it would be like, yeah, we're not going to put a, 
a lunchbox character on your show that is going to run on a Viacom owned network. It's just it was the Wild West, but it was it was. I'll send you. I wish I could remember the name of this shop. Or the the, the, shop. Shop yeah, the TV show, the, the fake, fake shop. shop. Yeah. Well, I love that you were you were saying you scratched the stickers off to make it yeah, look just legit, make it like, look like it had been uh, lived in, you know. Um, uh, so how how did that segue to you writing comics? Well, I'm asking this from a very selfish perspective as someone who wants to write comics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll tell you, uh, you know, that's the number one question that I think I get and we all get as comics pros. And I do try to pay that kindness that the Simonsons showed me to everyone. Uh, you know, I, I think go to panels at uh, cons, go to artist alleys, find collaborators that will... Um, you know, uh, make up for your own deficiencies. If you are not an artist, uh, find an artist. You know, if you're an artist and you don't like to write your, for yourself, find a writer. But then also be a part of the community. Um, you know, uh, I worked at G4 for a long time and mm -hmm. Blair Butler uh, used to review oh. comic books uh, in a segment called Fresh Ink. And she did like seven years of live TV and there was never... Uh, a flatly negative review because if she didn't like something, she didn't talk about it. And so I do, you know, uh, I, I think the young folks coming up now are a bit savvier than sort of the generation that was between me and them now, where everything just felt like it was something that was had to be thrown against a wall and for the world to see. Um, you know, you, be, all you have to do to make comics is make comics. There, if you wait for the invite, uh, you you may uh, you know it's like that classic Seuss uh, spread the waiting place the dreaded waiting place mm -hmm. you it's can't wait you just have to do it uh, and uh, even if you're even if you're only doing this to eventually get asked to write Batman or Wolverine you have to be able to make your own stories first um, I I am not a guy that thinks that um, fan fiction is necessarily a way in because you can't really pivot, you can't ask or count on anyone to read it for legal reasons. Mm -hmm. So if that's what floats your boat, that's great. But uh, it can be a good place to hone certain skills. Absolutely, 100%. But. Um, but I've been asked to, to read like Deadpool scripts and I'm, or had been when I was the Deadpool guy and I was like, you can't, I, I, you can't. I, I, I can't. Um, but I don't know that people know that. So I, I'm, I have nothing against fan fiction. It's great. You learn how to write dialogue. You learn how to, you learn all that stuff. But then when push comes to f shove, if you're going to make it a career, I just recommend making your own uh, IP. Uh, that's, or that's what we call in intellectual property. Uh, make your own stories. Tell your own stories. Put something um, into the world that uh, A, does not exist, and B, that you would spend money for. And a lot of crazy things can happen because I, th my next step was uh, Brian uh, Posehn and I uh, uh, became friends uh, out of that working ex experience. And then um, we had this crazy idea um, to do uh, Santa Claus after the apocalypse. <laughs> and so we wrote a crazy screenplay. And the craziest thing about the screenplay was that we wrote it as though it were like someone was going to give give us two hundred and fifty million dollars to do a live action. Sure. Like with, Santa. Yeah, and, Hello, and, Mister Sir. Here's yeah. two hundred and fifty million dollars. Oh, of make, course. Make us, Santa, make us your like Christmas shooting miracle. zombies. Like uh, we have. Do you need another hundred million? <laughs> like. So none of that happened. But what you know, I was starting to come up with the idea that was my second comic book that I thought was going to be my first. Uh, called uh, Infinite Horizon, and I um, mm -hmm. loosely reimagined the Odyssey because I, as I'm trying to figure this out for myself, I'm going, well, that that's a that's a bestseller. That that's can, a classic <laughs> that I can crib from. A couple that, of people enjoy that one. Yeah, that's uh, that one's royalty free. I can't <laughs> like if you if you hate that book, it would only be for my contribution of having <laughs> miss. Uh, <laughs> you know, missed the mark. But um, Christmas got me a book that I could uh, 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 hand to people to go. Uh, so you planned a screenplay, but then you ended up making a comic of it. Yep. 
and we made the comic all I think we were kind of revenge minded Brian and I the last Christmas is that what the last Christmas <laughs> and uh, just going people going it's really hilarious what else do you have and we were like Oh, we're supposed to have something else? Like, was that the... Oh, this, you're not just going to get me $250 yeah, yeah. million dollars for this? We were just, yeah, so the... the I mean, know. a lot of stuff was getting optioned back then, to be fair. Yeah. So. No, it, it is true. I mean, there was, you know, look, after uh, 300, you know, even the, those guys came calling for that movie, mm -hmm. which made me laugh, too. Uh, but, but the, you know, the comic book, we just wanted it to exist in the world. Uh, actually, it was the last thing that uh, Remender drew before he became the mayor of comics writing. Mm -hmm. I uh, mm -hmm. Rick, uh, Rick and uh, Hilary Barta, who is very much from the Wood School of inking, very luscious inks. Um, it's a it's a Santa it's a Santa Claus Western, uh, and uh, <laughs> but uh, even though at the time we were like, well, that was a crazy experience. It, it looks great. It, I, I, How did you all find Remender and Barta? That's a whole other... Uh, Sorry. Rick had Hillary uh, on the speed dial, but I found Rick because, uh, and this is true, uh, I, my first San Diego, walking through Artist Alley, uh, I bumped into Rick and Kieran Dwyer were sitting together. And uh, Rick was selling, uh, hand-selling, uh, his creator-owned comics. And I don't know, it, this may have been stuff that he printed just uh, by himself. Like, it was certainly outside of image. And I think this particular comic that caught my eye was Captain Dingleberry. <laughs> um, and he goes, we need letters to run in the letters <laughs> columns. And I was like, I bet you do. And then I was like, I, I know a guy who could. So I bought a comic because I was like, wow, this guy is Pretty cool. A, hilarious, and B, <laughs> is like, like, climbing into my wallet to get the money. I was like, this guy's great. So we stayed in touch uh, by email, and uh, he was like, oh, I didn't, like, I just thought you were, like, some idiot. I didn't know you were, like, an idiot trying to be a professional idiot. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm trying to do this for real. Uh, and so, um, you know, it, it's part of the social thing. Y you'll find, too, that the people that you are coming up with they're never really um, your competition. They're all just sort of in your class. Uh, and hopefully you can help each other as you uh, climb the stairs. Somebody will get a, a big uh, job at the big two and then word of mouth spreads. Oh, I know someone that can ink that person really well or color that person really well. I think it's important to uh, find that community and, uh, and, and not necessarily just online if you can really put a face to a name, uh, go to shows, go to artist alleys, go to small press shows, um, do the online thing. But you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Like, <laughs> I've been very lucky in collaborators from the get-go. You know, the, so the, you know, the, the real answer is I, I had a, a, a very famous comedian writing partner and it still took five years to get Deadpool. Yeah, like mm -hmm. just as a, like a point of reference, like, it wasn't all, uh, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't flush with offers. No, uh, Big Lebowski, uh, Infinity Wars. Yeah. I mean, so nothing happened in between. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you nope. did right no work there. in there. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> they just threw it at you. I threw it. They, because I you was... were like, Drax has a saxophone, let's go. There, there was yeah. a surprise. You're going to have to explain there, that to the audience. Well, we will. Oh man, there, there was this. I, I will say there was a surprising amount of success that came out of that comic book store. The number, the number of people. I mean, not everybody who shopped at the Golden Apple sure. found riches and wealth, but like, <laughs> no, I, I but like right. a surprising number of people got out of there with chops at the very least. Jeff Thorne, right, Oof. is uh, uh, has Game more Thorne. credits and, than, and Draco than I and, do, and and Draco and uh, really need to get on Draco back on. I know. We'll get. We'll get. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get yeah. back on. Uh, by the way, don't forget to give us your topics. Start singing those in for our five-minute topic. <laughs> we have Warren Jerry that we're going to be doing that, so he's he's all ready. Uh, so get those in. We'll do those at the end of the show. I'm, I'm, I'm amused by the truth. As we do this, so you have, just yeah. to outline it for our audience, uh, after seven years of Deadpool, uh, you have also now done runs on a bunch of other stuff in addition to starting up some more creator-owned work. Um, so... If you have specific questions about some of that stuff, you can start throwing them in here and Matt will go through it. But I thought maybe 
if you guys are into it, I want to see some more of the things you pulled aside for Wally Wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should probably actually talk about that topic. I mean, like, point, I right? mean, like, this is half the fun of the show is, is that we, 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 we drift yeah. away from the topic, we come back to the topic, we go sideways. Uh, my favorite thing that I read, I'm just going gonna, gonna to start sharing, is um, I found an issue of House of Secrets. I'm a big fan oh, of House wow. of Secrets, and I, I collect Look at that covers. Thank you. Covers, I know, isn't this gorgeous? Look at this gorgeous thing. This is... Oh, it's this is, gorge. This is, this is, this is like what nightmares are made out of. This is, this is everything I love about, like, this is like Doctor Who terrifying yeah. wonderment. And the, the one that Wood did is called uh, uh, World for a Witch. And look at this storybook. Beautiful. I mean, the lighting on this, the kids staring in the window. Every aspect of this, just, it's just such a well-built world that, that in fairy tale world that he puts it. and it, it's such a specific look that I it took me a minute to figure out it was him because it, there's so much detail and there's so much it's got such a fairy tale look that I'm just not even used to I'm like th this, these very intense faces that he draws on these characters that have that are very so cool oh and this story this is a story of, of a witch who is learned she's terrible to orphans and is, and is beating them with whips uh, very badly but she has discovered how she can like disappear into paintings. Oh and wow! So she has this. Gray. She has this painting on the wall of like this beautiful, this ah! this, this beautiful uh, um, uh, little little woods woodland that she goes into and she hides in when when she wants to disappear, uh, and then comes out and beats more orphans, <laughs> and the orphans eventually trick her, in this very fascinating way. She 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 murders one of the grounds creepers and they trick her, while they're running and she's trying to catch them. They switch paintings. Mm. On her, so when she finally goes to escape, they're like, "Well, I don't. We don't think we're ever going to find her ever again." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she gets tri it's such a, it's such a wonderful, strange little story. Here's a, oh, here's, yes. a, here's a wood splash. A splash page is a full oh. page. Oh, pack. oh wait, yeah. oh wait, actually, here got I've got, I've got the color version too of that. Doctor Doom, Master of I mean, of look at the moon. That's very wood. That's like an EC Marvel oh. mashup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on on this side over here, the the craters. You know, that, that's something you see a lot uh, in, in here, he, his sci-fi Here's work. the color version of it, actually, and I, and I couldn't uh, tell. That's so cool. Uh, one of his, it was his, his, one of his, his wife at the time, he, he was married Tatiana. a couple times, yeah, was, was doing a lot of color work. Uh, and I think, I, I couldn't find, a, I couldn't find any, any credits for this particular color run on, on this Doctor Doom. But I th I, I, I'm assuming it might have been her since I also know she went on to do, like, some of Morrison's Animal Man and, oh, Lord, so many great credits. Um, one of the one of the things that like I, I found a uh, a book uh, called The Life and Legend of Wallace Wood and there are two mm. volumes mm. of it. Um, I can't remember. I think it may have been through Fantagraphics, but there was one in there called uh, Making. And there was a chapter in there called Making My World. Oh, what is that? Oh no, that's so much. Yes, that's so much. Is it too much? To oh my! Oh part? my God! It's amazing. Here I so can. Yeah, just just beautiful. Wood was heavily influenced by uh, comic strips. Yep. Uh, by the the fine artists, like the Alex Raymonds and, and Hal like Foster, uh, and what was this for? What was this? Oh, that's so beautiful. I think this is probably. He's notable uh, in his time, in a time before anyone had credits, he was one of the, the early artists to go ahead and sign their names. It was a thing that made EC notable was that they They encouraged. actually allowed that, yeah. Yeah, some companies didn't want you to muck up the art with your well, signature. And his, but and his signature was very like Robin Hood, Mm -hmm. Like he just put wood. He didn't put Wally Wood or anything, and it didn't look like a signature. It was like a wood block engraving that he would do, not like an actual wood block engraving. It, but, um, yeah, I'm not that's what sure it looked where like. where Joan of Arc ran. I also he was also doing this. I mean, like he did everything. I like I've I've been looking up, and he did like he did the covers of a couple um, ch children's books that one of, one of which I remember owning. Really? As a child, which were the the, the childhoods of famous scientists. Oh, um, you know, I read about him doing that. Yeah, he did. He did the covers of of, of uh, the yeah the the of like the the child stories of famous of, of famous American scientists. <laughs> wow. Uh, in the very like highlights for children kind of vibe. I don't know if this that might be too small. But it might be too small. Uh, I don't we know. Can zoom. <gasps> the, there we go. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, Wood over Kirby. Oh so wow. Wood was a, he, a, like an inker. Uh, for a lot of these uh, years too, and uh, yeah, it's right. He did ink some he, he, for Kirby, inked, uh, and also had a you know a collaboration. I think he was doing stuff. Uh, you know, uh, you had mentioned Wit's End before, 
you know, uh, they. I think he had a studio with with um, Ditko for a while. They were certainly like trading pages, and you can well, sometimes flip over those pages and see notes oh yeah. back and forth. And, and uh, Kirby, Kirby gave him one of his first gigs, from, from yeah. what I read. Kirby, he he had been running. Uh, apparently, uh, would have been running up and down through through Manhattan, trying to get hired, like he did at the time. And yeah. Was, Failing Sounds utterly, like. got into a conversation during one of his his failed job interviews, and like got just taken over to Kirby's studio. And Kirby was like, literally, apparently, you're hired. Get in with, here. Like, uh, yeah, with Severin. 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 Yeah. With John Severin. John Severin. Yeah. God. Oh. So, so, <laughs> to Marie, uh, they uh, previously mentioned. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see. What, um, so in this book, the, there's a so Weird Science number twenty two featured a story called My World, mm. which I've seen referenced more than a few times as like. Walt, like some of Wally Wood's best, most notable work was this one story. Um, and it's, it's basically like, uh, this is my world as a world of grim faced men sitting before battery, but it's like, there's dinosaurs, there's sci-fi, there's time travel. <laughs> yeah. My world does this, my world does this, my world does this. And it's just like runs this gamut of everything. And then at the end, it's the last panel is Wallace, Wally Wood turning to address the audience saying, this is my world. I love science fiction and I'm gonna draw, like this is how I draw it. And it's That's a so self portrait cool. of him drawing the very God, panel that, that he's in. And I think he was younger in the art that you're talking about, but that's a picture of Wallace uh, in his later years. Yeah. That's a pot of coffee in his hand. <laughs> Uh, heading out to the uh, studio. Uh, on, on the same sci-fi level, he also did some of the preliminary work on the Mars Attacks designs, if, if I remember. On the Tops cards, yeah. On the, yeah, on the yeah, original yeah. trading card, uh, sci-fi trading cards that eventually became the Mars Attacks. But like this, this, this impressed oh. me a lot because it says, in late 1951, he begins to introduce Zipatone and Duotone paper yeah. to produce different effects. And throughout 1952, he displays an increasing tendency to employ methods not only page to page, but panel to panel. So he was actually cutting panels out and pasting new panels in that were done on special pieces of paper like mm -hmm. to get like or special or effects yeah, and special effects. they have they have pages from this my world comic mm. um, that are absolutely oh. amazing oh where you can see like oh some of it wow that is really cool but like some of the paper is like if you rub it one way it's dark if you rub it another way it's it's lighter that's so cool. it's shading and stuff like that because all the and artists he's doing that panel to panel and no one was doing that at that time and like you can see the different well, effects I, I don't when know you look it's at so it so small i don't know i mean i'm going to try and show this to the audience but yeah. this is i'm sorry that my ipad is smaller than yours why so. i mean like it's it's adorable i mean like it's almost a phone it's so <laughs> you're such a jerk you're such sorry. a jerk apparently this is the one thing no. didn't fix i'm i'm richer than you i if have we can zoom in, this this would i keep i feed my ipad at. it didn't starve yours it would grow bigger like a koi fish <laughs> uh koi doesn't grow koi doesn't grow <laughs> You can see uh, the, the the shading in there. Oh, thank you for uh, the, the way that the, the rocks in the background and the change shade, dark to light, and then light to dark. The way but like after after I read oh. this one piece in this book, it completely changed the way I was looking at Wally Wood's work because like you see like you can immediately start to identify stuff because even even just like a small little oh. like TV screen yeah. will be a completely so like even like not only panels but. Within the panel, he's cutting things out and putting. He's and so young. Things in. Yeah, look he at was that. So young. He yeah, he. Look really at that he, baby face. Yeah, I'm gonna show that. Oh up. man. Okay. Like I'm, I'm gonna show baby Wally Wood drawing himself, as a like very like. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, he's like, like 28. <laughs> like. Um, less. Probably. Oh yeah, yeah, probably less. Um, yeah. he was born in 1929, and this is the early 50s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. He, uh, uh, he also he was apparently one of the highest paid artists at Mad Magazine. Nineteen twenty-seven. When, okay. when he when he left mm -hmm. Mad Magazine, he was uh, I looked this up, uh, two hundred dollars a page, wow. at Mad Magazine for the time. And then he and and I was reading this up. He left when he left Mad Magazine to work with Marvel. Their r starting rates were twenty a page with fifteen to ink, and they were giving him forty-five a page uh, because it was here's the because it was him because it was Wally because it was Wally. I think. Marie Severin did colors in this. Mm. Well. Oh, I bet you're right. Almost certainly. Uh, yeah. So at some point, she became the primary colorist for EC. And uh, one of the virtues of what she was able to do is work around the considerably limited technology of the time, uh, figuring out how best to uh, accentuate the storytelling with very, very limited options 
uh, she would again do these beautiful watercolors and then mark out what she wanted based on the three colors and the 25, 50, or 100 percent tones. Uh, but the there are original color guides for these, uh, and you can see that just she she sort of speaks lovingly about Wally Wood's art. Uh, oh. She calls him Woody, but she she would talk about that like he put so much detail into everything that mm -hmm. it would require a lot of work on her part to sort of help distinguish the front and the background because if she tried to follow the exact fiddly bits and the printing inevitably Fiddle got bit. messed up because it was 1952 and the printing was terrible, yeah. everything would be totally illegible. Mm -hmm. um, so there, uh, so here, stunning. oh yeah, so you can see leaving this figure white makes that action jump out from the rest of the page in a way where trying to color everything with the exact details with the technology of their time would have been a terrible failure. There, there's a story also that, that she denies about, about attempting to use blue tones to uh, mark things in the books that she thought people might find that she found questionable. Uh, she denies that. There, yeah. She definitely denies that. I, That's I, so funny. I would love to but get into that. Uh, she, she, was a, she was very conservative and was a big fan of going, those guts are going to be yellow so that they're just slightly less disgusting. But she <laughs> would generally just, say, if you color yeah. all the guts different colors, it will end up a brown, mushy mess when mm -hmm. they send this back from the printers. So I'm going to make it all yellow so that you can tell what the, mm. like, I, but she... It, it, we can get into it later because she was just like, look, I respected the art. I would never oh, have changed much. a line of it. Yeah. But her editor was sort of like, nah, she colored that part dark blue so you can't <laughs> see the explosion. And she's just like, no. And, no. You know, she was aware, of course, yes. that they were getting in trouble and did, in fact, get in terrible trouble. Yeah, but so would, she was not wrong. She would never have executed, uh, had editorial privilege. Yeah, as an, uh, as oh. an example of him using different pieces oh, of my paper within the panel, God. Like, there's a stark what? example right there. That's one panel. And there's like a whole other, like that out the window oh. is that's actual different paper that he drew on and then taped into the panel before production. Also, Easy had a totally insane storytelling method, which I didn't realize till I was reading this book on Marie. Um, I didn't realize Al Feldstein didn't write scripts for the stories. He literally wrote the stories onto the page and then the letterers put the captions on top, put the bubbles in, and then they sent it to the artists. Who apparently were always complaining because they wanted to do cool, unusual layouts. That explains yeah. so much about the layouts from yeah. the TC book. But there wasn't time. They were doing everything so fast. Um, so there are no original script pages for those. There's just like you would get it and all the bubbles and captions would already be there That's and you would so just do funny. your best. Yeah. I, I, I whatever I, yeah. you do, whatever you need to do to get to print, that's what you gotta do. Mm. To get your deadlines. It's a pretty amazing. Also, you, you were you were talking about his his shortcuts issues and I found I found a really interesting apparently like his his once he was full on in comic books and like doing mostly comic books and, and like in order to, to make money in comic books you, you know you can't do four Mad Magazine pages and then call it a day by the way there's also I found a Mad Magazine thing of him actually doing a cartoon version of Superman versus Shazam as a legal battle. It's one of the most famous Mad oh Magazine. Oh my. I think oh my. Alan Moore Super Duper Man. he got that one yeah. as a yeah. young child and it warped him. So thank you, yeah. Hollywood. Thank you for Super yeah. Duper Man. Uh, Super Duper Man. Super Duper I've Man. never heard this story. What is oh. this? What happened? It's a Mad Magazine like joke story about Super Duper Man uh, suing a Shazam-like superhero oh for copyright my infringement. God. Do you remember what issue that is? Uh, if you look up Super Duper Man, on, oh, just man. Google Get Super it. Duper I Man. Super Duper Man's, Man's origin. Right up. Yeah. It is very Mad Magazine. But he he eventually like Ran he was nice oh, opening yeah. page from a sci-fi story. He was he was apparently one of the first artists to admit to tracing. Uh, and what it was said, never draw what you can swipe, never swipe what you can trace, never trace what you can photocopy, never photocopy what you can clip and paste down. Which, but I don't believe he ever did that. I, <laughs> apparently, a, a, like, and like, apparently the conversation about this was there came a point where he just wanted it to, he wanted his stories to be the stories that he was putting out and was like, I've got all of this, I'm just, I'm, this is just about getting everything I want out of my system and if I sit, I can either make one perfect thing a month or seven things that are like the seven things that I want to show. And it okay. just kind of just became, I have too much to get out. Right. Was he remixing himself there, or was Bits he... Bits and pieces of everything, apparently. He, it, as, as, as somebody put it, as everyone was, he was the one who was admitting to it. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Because he was also apparently very grumpy. <laughs> He's a grumpy Very guy. grumpy was, was the, uh, the never-ending vibe. But you see, uh, I think, a lot of Wood and, and really probably a lot of Jack Davis and some of the mm. other mm. masters in uh, artists like uh, Tony Moore. Uh, today, who um, you know, uh, uh, if you look at Fear Agent um, f from uh, 
oh. Rick and Tony, that that feels like uh, that was like a love letter to the old EC sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, so it is everywhere. There's uh, so much just, love in every. Talking like, about the ingredient. There's there's no way to draw. Th there, there, I can't imagine drawing this and not loving every moment of it. Like there's this this. Oh yeah. I mean this yeah. is a this is a backup story in a Vampirella comic book for <laughs> God's sake. What, what year did this come out? Uh, hold on, I have a button for that. Uh, and he, of course, he had several assistants who ended up joining him, so he left his mark on the uh, industry in the form of the people that he oh, worked with and mentored. Yeah, and I think... 69. Well, 69 was Howard Chicken work with him? Apparently? I, 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 think, I mean... Yeah. I only just learned that 71. Larry Hama uh, yeah. went on to be very influential, and is supposed, supposedly her, Larry Hama is the one who consolidated that 22 panels thing out of oh, notes that were just around. Like when really? Hama was in Marvel's editorial office, he basically said like they were these really useful guides that Wally just left up for himself, and he kind of gathered them up, made them into a thing, wrote that no bit about way. here's what they're for, and like passed them around the office yeah. to help new artists. And oh my know, god, that's amazing. Yeah, it, it's it's sort of funny. It reminds me of a story. Um, uh, I'm lucky enough a couple of times a year to get to uh, sit in a room with uh, Mark Wade, and we were at lunch one day, <laughs> and uh, Wade, Wade was telling me about being uh, in the offices, and when they were moving the D DC offices, uh, there was like this box that no one knew what to do with that was just ref. So it was ref for short, it was, uh, that, that, it was ref for short, it was reference, but pre-internet, you were like, uh, if you were had an artist coming on a book and they didn't know how to draw Perry from the side, mm -hmm. or you know, there's a Perry's heads turnaround. So there was like Kurt oh. Swan heads that had been clipped out of the original art. A very famous artist who worked on Superman yeah, and other and just stuff that you would look at and go like, uh, you know, there was no sense that it had any value other than the finished image, but. I'm sure if you had those pages today unclipped, you could open a museum. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, for, for the record, this 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 was the issue of Vampirella that my grandfather had lying around his house that eventually became my issue of Vampirella. So I had <laughs> That's the backup great. story, and I was just remembering. I mean, like, bless, I love Vampirella for all of its its cheesecake sleaziness, uh, and I just like went through the. I was just going through the letter column, and I found. This little image at the top uh, over here that says, A scene from the soft, sweet lips of hell. As illustrated <laughs> by Neil Adams and Steve Englehart, the script written by Denny O'Neill received rave reviews from our readers. Limited space prevents us from printing the hundred or more comments. I am, wow. I mean, nice. like, I am, I'm suddenly feeling like child me. Oh, God, this, oh, yeah, it was, was spoiled. It was terribly spoiled. Oh. If you go back and look at old comics, uh, uh, check out the letters columns. You'll almost always. About one in ten, you'll just see a name that you know, uh, either as a comics professional or in some other way. Uh, George R. R. Martin's mm -hmm. first published work was a Fantastic Four issue in which uh, he had some kind of beef. I remember. If you Google George R. R. Martin and FF, it, it'll come up. I never get tired of telling this story, but in the third issue of the short-lived Claws of the Cat, co-created by Marie Severin, no. Uh, and my, my favorite part about this, which doesn't work when I tell it, is that I found it just by reading the letters column at the shop because That's I was so like, funny. I haven't read Claws of the Cat, this short-lived attempt to like launch a line of uh, Marvel books created by and marketed towards women, which was a cool idea, and they gave up. Uh, but mm -hmm. it was the early 70s, and they tried it. Uh, and uh, in the third issue, there is an approving letter uh, from a young man who was tired of seeing all these unimpressive women in his comics and wanted something with a little more fire, and his name is Frank Miller. <laughs> and he was, Amazing. if we do oh. the math right, he was about 15, uh, oh, man. and he wrote into Claws of the Cat. Uh, I, I, I just also love that that I wish there was there's not a single panel from this comic book I can show because there's just <laughs> boobs and butt everywhere. But it is it is Cleopatra and Anthony running from werewolves and oh, and I love that it ends with Vampirella who is like going and that's the story of what really happened to Marcus Antonius and Cleopatra. They settled in the Balkans and are still alive or dead or living dead depending on your point of view in a region that has since become to be called Transylvania. Oh and sure. Just, why so, not? There why is not? A fun side note on this <laughs> is that in one of the Daredevil oh. issues he did 
Foggy Nelson and Karen Page went to a Halloween party dressed as Antony and Cleopatra. They did That's not. Great. And that oh was my god. I will. Like, so almost 10 years before he did this, he was already, already obsessed in, with Antony and Cleopatra. Because this, yeah, this was 71. And I do. I, Art I, and story, by the way, which also makes me happy. Yes. So yeah. this was, and it's. I mean, like, I know I. I have a weird love for Vampirella King. I know. I, she's sleazy as hell, but I love it so much. And you just forced me to buy Mad Magazine. I'm four. so yes! sorry. Yes! I can read this. Oh my God! I, show a page off. If show you can. a page. It's well, so this, ridiculous. This is, I believe what you were talking about is the Superman and Shazam. Captain yeah. Marvel. Uh, what was the name of the Shazam character? I couldn't I remember. I haven't seen it. Yet, um, I haven't read it. Uh, Marbles, I think. Captain Marbles. Oh, gee. And instead of instead of a, a, a lightning bolt, <laughs> it's a dollar. He's got sign. a dollar sign. Oh, uh, like like uh. I love and I love that that the fake Superman's uh, symbol is the Captain America logo, except it says 100% wool. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh. god! Look so at that. There was a real legal battle. Have we done an episode on that yet? Oh no, that's, not... that's that's like oh, oh my Marvel. god! Yeah, you Marvel. should time, time DC. It for the movie. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess he's called Shazam. He's the movie. Shazam now. Yeah. 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 yeah, DC sued the character they would later own out of existence for a name that they can't use because their primary rival has it now, and will it will disambiguate all of that at the appropriate time. Oh but god, that's hilarious. <laughs> it it doesn't get less funny. There's also a Wally Wood connection with Claws of the Cat because sort of. Warts and all, he is an amazing legend, and I love him very much. Uh, and it's funny because he actually inked Marie Severin for some of that Claws of the Cat stuff. And she was sort of like, yeah, you know, I drew it a certain way. And I think the quote was, she was like, when all, <laughs> Wally's yeah. inks came back and looked like she was wrapped in saran wrap. <laughs> but oh she was God, sort of, hilarious. she had a sense of humor about everything, including, apparently. This is so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's a bird. It's just, it's a, <laughs> oh, it's a it's a bird. And he said, and the and the little Billy Batson says Shazoom. Oh my god. No. Oh, oh my god. I'm so into this. I've loved strength. It's uh, Shazoom. Uh, strength, health, aptitude, zeal, ox, power of ox, power of another uh, ox, power of ox, power of another, money. Yeah, uh, and then money is the last. Money, thing. Shazoom. Okay, that's amazing, and we should explain that the character we Thank now you. know as Shazam uh, has origins in a character called Captain Marvel, uh, published by a company called Fawcett. Uh, and Boy, we'll do Fawcett one day. Yes, yep. he uh, he uttered, <laughs> he said the word Shazam to transform into a superheroic identity, and it stood for the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the reason for the action. And, and, and in a few short months, you will see me getting really done by how excited I am that we're seeing a movie based on Oh, that, that the trailer, trailer is great. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, no, it's like, and like, this is this Captain is the, Marvel picture. Ca Captain, oh. Are you segueing? So, uh, just Captain audience, Marvel pictures. there's a lot of great. different characters named Captain Marvel. Uh, mm. And one of them is Carol Danvers. And pictures oh, yeah. came out today. And are you allowed to have a, like, an a, opinion on any of this? Do you, do you know secrets? Do you know, how does this work? I usually yeah, we don't, get you in trouble. don't know secrets. Uh, but I guess I know more <laughs> about the, the upcoming stuff than I'm, I may even want to know. <laughs> Aww. Because you just, we all get you just want to go in cold. You do. Uh, but I am super excited for that movie. Uh, I, th I think it's going to be great. I think it's also really smart to actually take her out of what is th this Marvel and make it a period piece. And do then, like the night. Yeah, I'm cool. like, oh, I'm this it. is everything about it. You know, uh, especially look. I mean, the movies keep getting better and better. I mean. Black Panther, I thought, was really mm. their best, Insanely their biggest good. triumph. And now you have, hey, here's, let's see what you got with Marvel. So they, they uh, you know, I'm as, I'm as excited about anyone. For, 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 for those who don't know how, for those who don't follow uh, Amy on in Twitter or Instagram, <laughs> uh, perhaps, Can you, you show, I was going to say, show them show your happy your shoes. You were wearing your happy shoes. <laughs> uh, These great. are a real product that exists, and childhood me did not believe that was a thing that would ever happen. <laughs> Oh, childhood like, me never thought I'd get a Doctor Strange movie. Speaking of making Iron yeah. Man figures out of tape, yeah, like of course. actual shoes based on Carol Danvers yeah. that I can buy for my feet. I like that I can wear an Iron Man t-shirt and adults that I, like strange adults out in the world be like, cool shirt, man. Oh, like, when when we were at <laughs> Burning Man uh, and, ah. Matt, and Matt Mercer had his Doctor Strange, Strange hands. Hands. <laughs> Like we were in uh, the audience in has Sinner. no idea what you're talking about. That's so, okay. No catch That's okay. Uh, we were in this uh, an area of Burning Man called Center Camp, and it's kind of a big social area. And Stop these down. people went by and they saw that and uh, they saw him doing the Doctor Strange, Strange stuff with the the mandalas around, you know, the the light up mandalas, and uh, they went, oh, that's some Doctor Strange shit. 
And he told me that later, and I was like, that means we won, that that's now pop culture, yep. right? Like, yep. people know Doctor Strange in pop culture, so we've officially won, It does right? feel like a final frontier of, yeah, that you know Doctor Strange. It's, there was yeah. a Doctor Strange that show Man, convention. Nana knows this week. Doctor Strange. Yep. What? There was a Doctor Strange show convention brothers this week. Well, you know that they're there both was, giant fans. Yeah, like, well, I mean, Dr. like, Orpheus they were, oh, Doctor Orpheus, they were buying a new house for Orpheus. It's like, ooh, it has a Doctor uh, Strange window. You love that. He's like, ooh. So I would like to point out that the reason <laughs> I'm thrilling Jerry yeah. specifically about this is that, uh, I, and we, we asked you a lot of questions about getting into uh, oh, yes. like <laughs> becoming love comics and then the quest to start writing them and then uh, you guys ended up on Deadpool uh, and just as a, a brief outline like you've now done major runs on Guardians uh, oh boy followed by Act 2 in the form of Infinity Countdown and the current you're currently writing like the top lining crossover of all of Marvel comics how's that going it's uh, really wild um, I'm uh, I didn't ever think I'd be in this spot but having been in this spot or let me back up I didn't think I would ever be in this spot and then I thought oh I would not do very well in that spot uh, but everything has been super cool people have done all kinds of gymnastics behind the scenes to do the crazy stuff that we want to do. Um, you know, because uh, you said this just blew up from the Guardian story you wanted to tell. It just blew up from the Guardian story. I, I thought I, you know, you can't ever uh, think that you're ever gonna like get to be a, a guy like Mark, where you get invited back into a character. You know, he's written Cap twice, which is, you know, God bless him. That's amazing. But like I was like, what do I want to do with Guardians, and what what's the uh, what what's the thing that like doesn't exist that I would want to desperately pick up? And so the the big idea was uh, to have fun with that team, but to start to set the table that wouldn't it be a, a real tragedy to have uh, Gamora uh, follow in her father's footsteps? Because you know it, it, we're telling big crazy cosmic stories and you can do anything mm -hmm. uh, as long as I think you give someone on ground level earth a reason to pick it up as uh, a, a comic that you would like feel something that's the gold standard you read something and you you, you felt something um, so so yeah Gamora uh, opens the story by killing Thanos which was an ask, but as it happened, this, the usage that Donny Cates and Jason Aaron were both sort of playing, it became a really big opportunity to sort of pay off what Donny was doing in uh, his Thanos story and even sort of helping Jason with where his Thor story is going. Um, and it was great for me because I wanted to play with her as a villain named Requiem. And uh, she does. She she got the she got the Infinity Stones, and whether she knew it or she didn't, um, she also uh, has halved the number of souls in the universe, but not by killing them the way that her father did. She sort of just folded it all together and threw it in the stone, and then that's where uh, we get a lot of new toys and a lot of new fun weird su it's super weird uh <laughs> which is cool i think actually that's my favorite that's my favorite descriptor for anything so well and 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 to a certain extent i think there you know is a risk when you have like a bureaucracy sort of attached to like a a, a sandbox where that sometimes things could feel like it was corporate and that is not happening here at all, the, you know, that we ended up making a whole new universe of what we were calling Infinity Warps. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Warp as in warped. warped. And you'll be seeing yeah. these come to your local shop soon. Yeah, so Steve, Steve, uh, Steve Rogers and uh, uh, Stephen Strange uh, were yes. physically, literally smashed together and into like an almost thing-esque creature, like a carpenter's like John Carpenter's thing, and it was like, they were like, oh, that's too much. And I was like, let's just go with it because it looks bad, but hang on, there's <laughs> another weird element to this where when you have the power cosmic and you drag something to the trash, it's not really the trash. The soul stone is just a hard drive. So 
it's all information. And so uh, we ended up uh, with uh, not Captain America and not Do Doctor Strange, but uh, the Soldier Supreme. And in this ah! in this universe, like Professor Erskine was um, a fraud. Uh, there was no super soldier serum, and she was praying to some demons. Uh, and so we'll we'll get to tell all of this. Like it's gonna it's gonna it's this whole other, uh, it's gonna be this Thank whole you. cool thing. Uh, but I I do I, I do worry. Like I'm glad you guys have the reaction. But when you sort of have been reading Guardians. And then you get to Infinity Wars, do you ever... I, I know on the one hand, I'm very glad no one could have seen this coming. On the other hand, you sort of go like, you know, am I too far? That's where I'm, I'm, like, I'm relying on the editors and everything. And everyone's really excited. And there's a lot of surprises that we... Like, that feels like a big thing that we're going to give it that I just gave away. But the, there's so many other stuff, big and small, that, like, we haven't spoiled. And that's what feels really cool. So... We have our, our team. We know that Loki is moving behind the scenes to sort of make a cosmic Avengers that um, will stand up to this. And we Loki oh, always God. assembling Avengers. I know. You can't no, stop assembling just Avengers. Can't help it. That's what he does. So there's such a cool Loki beat. I really heard it. The only people, <laughs> the only people I heard really come knives out at the, which was crazy because I just thought. I'm gonna be a pinata. Let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone was was totally on board for this big, cool, weird story that we're doing, and uh, Mike Diodato uh, Jr. and Frank Martin are so good together. It it just looks incredible. But the 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 super fun thing now is uh, we get to I've set up the table. We have the Infinity Warps. We have Gamora. We have Loki doing his thing, and uh, I think we're likely to see. You know, whatever doesn't die in this uh, big war, we'll see again. Uh, and so it feels fun to tell the big, crazy story I wanted to tell, and then maybe leave some That's new toys, toys in the box. Yeah, because we're thinking, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll get off of this. <laughs> but we're thinking about the stones were always presented as a circle, mm -hmm. and uh, I when I got I the I guardians chair, yeah. we just twisted it into a lemniscate. So mm -hmm. that it, it's a circuit. So in Guardians, there was the idea when they found the Power Stone, it was the size of a building. And someone had tried, and the, our reality stone was in another reality, and the time stone was in another time, deliberately put on high shelves so that children wouldn't take the guns down and start sh shooting everyone. Um, and so we'll find out why that happened too. But But the idea was... You know, Ant-Man tried to shrink the stone. That didn't work. And really, it was just mind over ma matter. So someone smart enough that believed that they could actually shrunk the stone. I'm yeah. No, I, I love, like, <laughs> at the beginning of every issue, I think you have, like, the yeah. circuit. Yeah. Uh, idea, like, so good. That it was, like, such a fun, refreshing, like, sort of, not like retcon, but, like, sort of like a new way to look at the stones. Because it's always been, like, Here's Thanos, yeah. come and get me, you know? And it's like, I have all the stones, huh? I, I like that we're all agreeing they're stones now again. This, this does. They are gems! Well, okay. I'm sorry! You know what? They're, <laughs> hang, on, hang on, they're both. The soul gem is cut and polished in the story. The other ones are stones. Okay. Oh, but, that I'm down with. But See, he's nice. fixing no, everything. Yeah. I'm a cosmic nice. you're, 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 you're a living no prize. You're com you're, you're, oh, my God. You're coming up behind Hello. the MCU going, zip, 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 sweeping it up. I'm, I'm the guy a guy that yeah. looks like the Watcher is actually yeah no prize hanger outer. <laughs> I'm a big fan of what they're doing with uh, Gamora just because I'm also I'm a big fan of bylines, and Gamora's byline she hasn't lived up to her byline in a oh, while, I which hate. is the most dangerous woman yeah, in the universe, and yeah. that's a lot to live up to. Yeah, it's sometimes not a good thing, it's and I'm not really excited. Thing, but I, yeah, the, thank you. I, that was something that at the top, and you know that we said let's let's make her earn that the hard way, and I credit uh, what I call the room. The other writers uh, had a lot of wonderful ideas, the editors had a lot of great ideas, and a lot of people had to do some gymnastics with their stories to be able to accommodate the, sure. the big crazy stuff that we were we were doing here. Um, and you know, I, like the, <laughs> the, the look on some of their faces as we're sort of 
explaining this stuff is still uh, makes me laugh. You know, we're, we're like, yeah, think of the soul gem as a hard drive. It just info comes in and goes out, but right now it's corrupted. And we'll, uh, so we tried to sort of bring it down to a level that everyone could sort of understand why we were doing what we were doing. But I, I think, you know, the we'll we'll see how it lands. Uh, I'm very excited about I, it. I'm almost done. I'm almost. I'm looking. Right I'm really end. looking forward to it. I mean, like not since like what was it? Anni Annihilation Conquest was the last time that like Gamora was really scary when mm -hmm. she had the, the the cyber poisoning with Nova. Mm -hmm. That was some good. I mean, like yeah. I miss that stuff. That stuff was good. Well, and if it, like I, I don't mean uh, for I don't know how this is gonna sound, but like the last couple of years of Marvel events have been like uh, like I haven't been as interested in them. And uh, I understand, you yeah, know, like when yours came up, I was like, eh, here's like... here's another event. But I'll, I've, I've given every event a chance because I'm such a Marvel fan and yours is just just, well, just great. Yeah. Well, it's thanks. just I've, great. You know, I love it. A lot it, so. of help. Yeah, it's it's, uh, you know, and it was if it had not been an event, it was still going to be the end of my mm. Guardians story. Mm -hmm. So it was always there. It, it, it was always going to be be that it just has moved around a little bit um, i am curious given that your story does deal with for instance the stones and with thanos and with stuff that's kind of out there in the zeitgeist right now was there excitement when you had that was there static was there reluctant excitement uh i think there was cautious optimism <laughs> okay. um, but also we were really like i was pitching this at a time um a couple of years ago and even the room was different then, you know. Uh, I had uh, I had Bendis in there who was like, that Gamora beat is great, you know, to just hear him ratify it made that the, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm on the right track, um, even if it doesn't happen. And then it, it happens. They want you to be successful. They want you to, you know, if something is deemed to be a mistake, you can always write around it. But... Uh, we don't have a lot of female villains. Um, we and and look, no one is a bigger fan of Thanos than I am. But also, Thanos's time is is kind of in the rear view, where he he and and the other the other come back cool around, thing but it will come back around. But the the interesting thing to me is the way that and I don't want to spoil it too much, but you know. Uh, Gamora became Requiem and killed her father, and then she began to see her father, and we don't know, is that just something that is happening to Gamora, or could there be something more to mm -hmm. that? Um, and so uh, we are always writing and executing that so that you know that she's the only one that can see him, but is that by uh, whose design? If it's a design, whose design is that? <laughs> so. All my favorite toys. <laughs> it's neat, you know. I, I uh, you know, uh, I was as big a fan of the cosmic stuff. Uh, you know, Beta Ray Bill blew my mm. mind oh as my a God, kid, yes. and I've read all the Novas. I, I got to write a little bit of Nova, and so to be able to contribute to something. Also, it's super cool right now to not work on Earth. Mm -hmm. you know, to like go to space for a little while is, yeah. is, is it's neat. Yeah, they're even doing that in Donnie's Doctor Strange run right now. He's like out in space finding medical oh, yeah, space sure. artifacts. Yeah, he's space. Going it, to space. Do you get some value out of going back and forth between having, say, a kind of all too real near future story that you're dealing with and then running off to space again? Yes, I do. I think <laughs> they both, honestly, I think w they sort of nurture each other because. Uh, I always felt like, um, you know, I could punch myself out on one particular uh, bit of work and then, you know, uh, I guess the analogy is like leg day where you're like, okay, I can go, <laughs> I can go kick the crap out of some supervillains, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, regardless of whether it's for Marvel or for myself at Image, um, I do really believe, you know, you... you you have to write every comic like it's your last one. If you get a chance to be a comics pro, because that's a question I get of, hey, do you ever have an idea that you would not give to Marvel that you think is too too good, you want to own it? And I'm like, you you got to, that, that's a real quick way to sort of not be in the, in the business anymore, I think. You just want to put what you want to consume out there and hope for the best. 
hope you have uh, the taste that is similar and we'll keep it going. I did want to ask about one other book that you were yep. letting us in on a little early. Yes. Um, uh, this is, uh, you know what this is? This is called an ash can. It's a smaller, <laughs> so this how is tiny? an like, let's ordinary show it scale. comic book. This is analog. Uh, we printed that. This is regular comic size. And then this is what's called an ash can. Uh, this is... To I date think... myself, I, I, uh, the Generation X ash can was one of the first like things I oh. tracked down when I got into back issues and was like, sure. must have them all. Hmm? What is yeah. this, comics for ants? <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to do with this? They're usually promotional items, yeah? Mm. Yes. What's the promotional... point of an ash Why is it called that? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Uh, I should ask uh, Rosenberg. His Twitter handle is Ashcan Press. Yeah. I, I, I would, Matt Rosenberg, I, tell us. I was about to say, let's let's see if, if Matt Rosenberg will tell us in time I that it will down. show up. Show I was up about to say, does anyone know Matt Rosenberg? Yeah, does anyone in chat know Matt Rosenberg? I would ask you. With, yeah, text you're him right now. the person that, that I would ask about. He doesn't shop at House of Secrets. Uh, <laughs> tell him I love his uh, uh, four kids walk into a bank. Oh, that's a great man. comic. Yeah, I, I his, lost like man Multiple Man's one of my favorite oh, characters of all time. Man, yeah, and, and he killed that book. It's it's so, so good. It's yeah. so good. I'm not going to show this page, but this is the most <laughs> that's Deadwood my, shit. That's my. This is the most Deadwood shit I've seen. Oh in Oh my god. Time. That's my statement of man. That's beautiful. And then it goes. <laughs> and then it's some beautiful shower. I really like this. This. So uh, Dead Rabbit uh, is coming up on uh, final order cutoff, which is how. Uh, <laughs> I think That's if when I your can... shop sets the amount they're going to get, and it's kind of your last chance to make sure you can get a pre-order with them. It's usually three weeks to a month and a half, depending on the book, before the book comes out. And, and if I could change one thing about the uh, comics fandom... Uh, well, that's not true. One of the things that I wish I could change about the perception of the comics economy uh, is that you readers are the secondary market. We are uh, not selling comics to you. Uh, we are selling comics to the comic shops, and they have to guess about what they would like to, or what they think they could sell. And uh, so there are things that you can gamble on, and then there are things that you think you might be conservative about. But anytime you sort of walk into a comic shop on a Wednesday and the comic is gone, uh, either something happened crazy in it that caused that we didn't, that the retailers didn't know about. Uh, something has gone wrong, but you'd never have to hor uh, suffer that horrible fate if you pre-order your comic books, and so that's what we try to ask everyone to do, regardless of whether it's an image book, Marvel book, DC book. If you are pre-ordering it, you are investing in it, and you are uh, giving your money uh, in the hopes that it will succeed and uh, bring forth many issues and trade paperbacks. Sniff. Yeah. So we, we want to be able to communicate that to, to our fans, to our readers, um, because otherwise retailers are just going to have to guess. And they often have to just park, uh, you know, on titles that they know they can sell because they have rent just like everyone else. So sometimes it's the, it's the creator-owned work that might uh, fall by the wayside there. And I think we have different audiences. I think the mm -hmm. image folks are much more likely to trade wait or wait for the collection than maybe Marvel and DC readers are. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we will only get to the trade paperbacks if we sell enough singles. So a lot of folks in my position, a lot of men and women, just want to survive the singles. Nobody is necessarily trying to like make money on the singles because you want to collect the book get it uh, into a collection, and then that, that feels like if you can get a couple of trades, that's where it, it snowballs together. But Dead Rabbit is coming up. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a crime noir, but it's also an action comedy because it's myself and it's John McRae, who is a living legend. Hitman. I was, trying, I was Hitman. looking at the art. It was like, I remember Hitman was a big oh thing my for God. me. He's, uh, it's the most McRae that McRae has McRae. Ever McRae. It's pretty McRae. It's pretty McRae. He's uh, wonderful with Mike McRae Cray? It's McRae Cray. Yeah, show that. That's a There's flashback a great. to the... To this is the, beautiful. To the 90s. Yeah, he's... Uh, so this is set uh, in Boston. It's about a stick-up man uh, who gave up the, the life of crime out of love and now he is, 20 years later, uh, returning to that uh, same life out of, uh, uh, to save uh, that same love. So it's a drama, 
I sort of I described it the other day, and I, I sort of I like this the elevator pitch. It's a it's a romance with some really wonderfully drawn fatalities. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So it's it's a guy uh, it's a it's a guy who doesn't want to be doing this, but is back doing it, and uh, there's action, there's comedy. Uh, we have some very uh, diverse uh, characters coming up. Uh, it's and it leads to a second arc that could only happen in Boston, and so that feels really cool. I went to school mm. in '90s in the Boston uh, area, and my um, uh, like, I'm getting able, I'm being able to use a story. I was in a cab, we were rolling down Beacon Hill, no. Uh, over a uh, over outside the Green Line, rolling down, and uh, the cabbie's vodka bottle rolled from underneath the seat and got jammed up uh, in front of the car. But then he couldn't apply the brake because the vodka bottle was in the way. Oh my God! The green, the like the, the we were about to hit a T train, uh, uh, you know, and uh, so I got to put that into. I'm like. <laughs> Putting a lot oh, of memories. fun Boston stuff that isn't really fun um, into <laughs> this comic book. Uh, and by the second arc, you'll really see it could only exist there. And so much of... I, I understand we need Marvel's Manhattan because you want Spider-Man to be able to fly through the window of the Avengers mansion. But mm. I think it's sort of cool. And Analog is, is a book that exists everywhere. Um, so, so I will say, like, Jersey's a big state, but was it exciting when Kamala Khan kind of put Jersey City on the map? Man, that was really rad. <laughs> I, I just read the most recent issue where it's like literally, it's 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 it, the whole uh, like for those who are behind on 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 Miss Marvel, the whole idea that the Shocker has finally gone to Jersey because because Spider Man, fuck, fuck Manhattan. <laughs> no, there's so goddamn many. And it's just in Jersey, it's just you. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love, I love it. that. It's That's so it's great. The most Shocker, it's the most Shocker moment I've seen yeah. in ages. So uh, well, do we do we want to say anything else about Wally Wood? Um, we should. I mean, like, we should talk about Marie Severin. We have also. a moment yeah. about Marie Severin since we said we would, and I know we're going to probably end up doing a whole episode at some point. But yeah, I have missed. I have missed this, so I want to see this. This, this, this. Of like, I have. I have. When, when you're about to go. Fit? Okay. Uh, I need this. So Marie Severin is a longtime hero of mine. I am half. I took this book home, but had not actually read it sadly until this week prompted me to finally do it, uh, and I'm yes. learning. I'm about halfway through, and I'm learning a tremendous amount about uh, this. I, I feel like the the sort of killer shorthand here is that, and you can tell me if you tend to agree, but I would say if people could magically time travel to two comic book offices in American comics history ever, they would pick early 50s EC and 60s Marvel. Yeah. 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 And there was one woman in both of those offices, mm -hmm. uh, which even if without Crazy, the rest of her right? story would yeah. be remarkable, uh, but it turns out the rest of her story is remarkable, too. Uh, she was sort of an omni-talented artist and comics person. Um, she, her brother, John Severin, who is, we mentioned earlier, uh, worked with Wally Wood uh, at several studios before they landed at EC, uh, was a very talented penciler um, who was doing, like, war and, and other stories at EC. Uh, and there came a day where EC being kind of known for investing in and paying for higher quality art. Uh, Harvey Kurtzman, one of the editors at EC, was really tired of everything coming back from the colors looking real crappy uh, because it was 1952 and to do colors you just mailed them to Connecticut and they gave you back something. Uh, that's probably a disservice to the hardworking, uh, apparently women of the factory in Connecticut. And I don't know if anyone ever got their story. Yeah, but, I uh, wonder. <laughs> um, uh, they only had four colors. That's where the four color the, mm -hmm. came from. Mm -hmm. So you had options, you had three colors in black, you had values of 25%, 50%, yeah. seven, uh, and 100, I think. And between those, you had to make all of the possible magic. So they hired Marie in, uh, or, or so Harvey was dissatisfied. John went, my sister's kind of artistic. Uh, they brought her <laughs> in. <laughs> That's how it happens, you gotta, yeah. You gotta We're literally all in New York. Be a part She's of the next door. Yeah. Um, uh, and she came in and became their sort of in-house uh, oh, everything. Things. Uh, here's just a wonderful, like, one of the other artists, Johnny Craig, painted this portrait of her, which I am just fascinated Holy by. Holy cow. Um, because her version of herself is this, she and did Johnny a, Craig also, by the way, super talented artist. Mm -hmm. Was obviously 
I didn't, I've never, I've never seen that. That's incredible. So here's how she drew herself at this time, um, or like maybe a little later on. She did this endless series of little cartoons of herself and everyone around her. Um, and a recurring theme in this book is that everybody wishes they had kept those because there'd be an entire book of her bullpen sketches from oh, wow. EC and Marvel. Oh, man. Um, uh, so we, we will go into a lot more because Ultimately, she colored everything wow. EC for the last couple of years, and then a, a long. St I want to take you through the whole story because her whole story is amazing. But she ends up at Marvel in 1965 or so, and stays there for several decades. And at some point, that issue of Cole, oh my God. She is the signature artist with her brother of Cole. Of Cole, oh my. Because they did about two years. God. He was penciling and he was inking because somebody figured out she could draw. Um, wow. She was hiding in the production department being the production department because by that point, it's 1965, she's been doing this for decades, she knows how the process works, she can fix your corrections, she can do small bits and pieces there. She was so useful that I feel in some ways it like almost prevented her from getting right. like a legendary run because they kept taking her off of things to move her to other assignments. Uh, oh, that's a drunk Iron Man, isn't it? Um, Oh, this is uh, <laughs> one of her, She so she ultimately got very Five famous for uh, uh, the note from Marie in the margin indicates Steve Ditko refused to illustrate a drunk hero. Oh, wow. This is original art to the splash page from Iron Man 160 um, and her note for that. Uh, we, her oh, career, do, we have to do a whole episode on Marie Holy at some point. Holy uh, She was very tight with uh, Mr. Ditko even when uh, you know, people mistook him for mm -hmm. being a recluse. He, uh, oh. but she was in constant communication with him. Did you ever have opportunity to meet her? I'm, I never did. And I never did, uh, and I I regret that. Um, I did. I was pen pals with Ditko for a little while. Really? Were you really? Yeah. Wow. I just we, you know, going back to that those days at the Penta convention, we we flipped through the. The phones used to be in phone booths, and they had uh, these. You looked him up. Oh yeah, so it was, <laughs> and he was listed. It was S Ditko, and it had his address and his phone number, and so we'd drop a dime. Oh, what a and, different time! Yeah, you uh, uh, like, are you Steve Ditko? Yes, I am. I'm not interested in, in having a conversation right now, and then that would be that. And we didn't like bug him, but we were like, okay, we got an address. And so, you know, like it was not until many, many years later that uh, that I had the nerve to oh my like God. Drop, write him to she drop was, a note in the mail. But she doing product design? I'm sorry. I'm so, oh, yeah. Oh, wait, what was that? She did everything. She uh, did everything. You know, she ooh. was. Um, I think you know, uh, even helping when when Dicko is oh. not doing mainstream comics, uh, and his own uh, Mr. A stuff. I think she was helping produce that. And you know, people forget like he came back and did Speedball and like mm -hmm. stuff for DC. Squirrel Girl. Squirrel I think Girl. it was always they were uh, like a package. The, 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 the yeah, Stanley Squirrel birthday Girl, card exactly. was amazing. She had to be. Uh, she was one of the first people to follow Steve Ditko on Doctor Strange. I was curious, yeah. Matt, if you like had thoughts because she did a good six to nine issues of Doctor Strange. She's uh, the second the, artist after Ditko. That's amazing. It was like, I had, know, didn't remove. I, like, I need to Chris go back and, and look book. back at those. <laughs> I had the Chris Star coloring book. It was so good. Ah, okay. I mean, it makes sense though because she and Dicko were were close. Like they they got along famously. Oh man. Uh, I think we need to start wrapping it this up. It is probably time to start wrapping things up. Because we've got 10 minutes left. Oh, like, it's so, so um, much. And there's, uh, that's, that's a caricature she did of the entire Marvel office. Yeah, that's the bullpen. Uh, the, which the other staffers of the time have said was accurate to the last detail of where everyone was and what they were doing. Oh when Marvel God, got around boom. to doing humor material, she became one of the mainstays for not brand X. For X. Crazy for all of... She will get her own episode because she was... Yeah. Just without parallel. There's there's no oh. one like this. There's so yeah, this is too deep. I can't wait to read this. There's so much <laughs> yeah. happening in that book. Um, uh. And uh, before we wrap up and before you let me get carried away with like I learned why people in old comics have blue eyes. I'll tell you that'll be our teaser for next time. Oh, uh, I don't know that. No, uh, I'm to that. We have a five minute topic probably. We do. Uh, are, do you want to do the introduction and then I'll I'll read it to you? Sure. Okay. Welcome to our five minute topic for the Wednesday Club. We have our special guest Jerry Duggan here and we have a uh, topic selected from oh the my. chat. We do, of we course. do. 
The winning topic comes from uh, Beatty TB. Hi, Beatty. Hi. The question is, a comic book character is broke and decides to endorse a product in Japan. <laughs> Who is the character? What is the product? Bonus, what does the Japanese commercial look like? Uh, <laughs> so we're going to have five minutes to answer this uh, as soon as that goes up. So start thinking of your answers. Uh, it can be in. Okay, we're going. Can you read that can, question one more time? Okay. Uh, a comic book character is broke and decides to endorse a product in Japan. Who is the character? What is the product? Bonus, if you can say what the commercial I, looks like. I, I feel like just for the sake of sanity, we should we should take Booster Gold off the table. <laughs> I feel like anything. I feel yeah. like it's already been written. Yeah. Uh, oh, without a doubt, okay. that okay. is already, that okay. has already been. Booster hit. Gold is helping hook these people up with the gigs. That's yeah. he's the go-between. Oh the my God, he's taking fifteen percent. Is um. oh <laughs> man, oh. And oh, uh, do we each have one, or we're pitching one? We we can we can each do one, or we can keep going if we go through well, quickly. If we go through, and like we'll help each other out, like yeah. it's just, we'll just start throwing stuff against the wall to see I, what sticks. I think uh, Parker, you know, oh. Parker's always in need of money. And, the Hood? Uh, no, no, Peter Parker. Peter, Peter, Peter. <laughs> so Peter, uh, Peter um, uh, is sent to Japan by Jonah for pictures and saves someone there and then becomes a celebrity and decides to. Uh, say yes to an endorsement deal that maybe it's for like deodorant, you know, <laughs> like with the with the like the you, webbing. You don't want to like show your sweating, and it could be really weird. And the animated smells would look like his rogues gallery, and then he couldn't cash the check uh, <laughs> because, because it's made out to made Spider-Man. Spider yeah. yeah, perfect. I uh, I will shout out to the <laughs> actual real early appearance of Medusa uh, from the Inhumans who shows up in New York City in the 1960s and gets roped into doing a shampoo endorsement. Oh my god, that's She doesn't uh, understand your ways. Uh, oh my god, I didn't know that. That is real. amazing. It's in Spider-Man uh, and it's fantastic. Oh man, I have to think about this. This is there's this one so this one there's there's a lot here. Like my my brain immediately went to the fruit pies, but we've already done that. We've already done, we've already done yeah. <laughs> We've already done the fruit I, pies. I I I personally think that squirrel girl would actually have a lot of appeal in Japan mm. and I feel like oh. she is, she's also eternally broke um, and would probably be uh, selling some sort of terrible confectionery uh, Deadpool uh, is doubt. very big in Japan uh, maybe he's big everywhere now but yeah. like they they our Western comics didn't really have much traction no not much at all yeah he could probably go there and sell butt stuff <laughs> <laughs> just butt stuff an, an assortment. An yeah. assortment of butt stuff. Yeah. An assortment of Deadpool butt stuff. I do think. Uh, For fun and hygiene. <laughs> I do feel like he, he, he can't really get broke, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I feel like Lockjaw <laughs> in a series of uh, yes. ads for whatever dog yes. food of the moment, mm -hmm. and he would become a huge opportunity of like just pose with Lockjaw. Yes. Just Lockjaw in front of, of different course. monuments around Japan. Japan. Um, that's, that's, that's great. That's a very solid <laughs> one. That's a very solid um, one. I know. I am it's, so in the weeds. On I, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you that you're holding on for dear life. I am like, I am, I am dying on this one. <laughs> uh, like my my immediate thought was like Harley Quinn, but I don't know like what she would even. Sell. She'd be up like, for it to be an adventure. No, she would absolutely be up for it. Like I mean, she I, would love that I could phone see, call. I could see a Harley, like a Harley Quinn, uh, a, like ad for like an expensive whiskey, where it's just like you take a sip of the whiskey, and they would just pay her to come out and whack people and, with a and hammer, smash it. Yeah. Oh, that's what it's, it's, it feels like. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah she just like smashes people with her mouth, and she's like, or, "It's like that pudding." Or there's there's those giant casts of sake that they had. They you can I I remember when I was out there, they had and you, she would crack them open for. Or her. maybe she is doing ads for pudding. Uh, uh, that's very true. It yeah, she's like, not I have much. my old pudding, but this is my new pudding. Oh no. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> right? No. The that Harley Freedom Tour. <laughs> <laughs> There's. Uh, would you buy a casket? Uh, from Frank Castle, like is the he ca Castle Caskets, Castle the Castle Caskets. Yeah, that feels like more of a Boston can, thing, but I'm definitely, I'm, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> against it. Your whole family in uh, one castle. Oh, oh. too <laughs> dark, too dark. <laughs> ah. I think you, you might plan that one, and different burial traditions would would get in the way, and they'd be like, I don't know, we we thought we had gold here. We've got all these <laughs> caskets, and no one needs them. Frankly, caskets. A double Frankly, caskets. double decker <laughs> caskets, because you could just buy one plot and, and then, then just bury the whole down. Oh, perfect. Oh, tragic origin. 
everything is so awesome. dark. Stories. Got so dark. Uh, what Batman, about, what about life insurance? Like, like yeah. Forge selling electronics. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, Except it's, that would it's, it's be funny because they'd be like, "We already have that," and he'd be like, yeah. "I invented this," and they'd be like, "We have we, that." We have that like, too. I made this. Oh, we've got. We, we've got I want, that. I want to say there's like there was like a whole neighborhood in Japan. I want to say it's Ikebukuro. It's been too long where they just buy like random. Akihabara. Akihabara. Might be Akihabara. Akihabara. Might be, oh god, it's been too long. It's been too many years. I got to go back. I'm trying to think of every like ridiculous Japanese commercial I ever Three, saw. Two, I don't know. One. Quicksilver and mass transit. <laughs> There we go. The bullet trains. The bullet okay. trains. He could race. So he's race ra he trains. races the bullet trains, and they beat him every time. And it's, it's just filled with Madrox. <laughs> we went over five minutes. We did. Gene, Gene Simmons uh, <laughs> sells caskets to Kiss fans. Why couldn't Punisher? I, yeah, you're not wrong. Are you, are you, you're, <laughs> no, you're still stuck on the casket. You can be, you can be frankly, buried in a kiss frankly kit. Frankly casket. A kiss kit. A kiss kit. A kiss oh, kit. My gosh. oh, my that's gosh. How much, kiss kit casket. That's how much he, he must love his fans. Oh, that's my key. That's Alice and Jaffe. I'm Amy Allen. This is a very special guest, Jerry Duggan. Uh, and that's been our five minute topics. You can watch us every Wednesday on twitch.tv slash geek and sundry and on Project Alpha. My God. And we have just a couple minutes left in the show. Are there, are there any is there questions? Anything else I, you want to make sure to talk about? Yeah, I'm like, let's let's. No, we did it all. You guys were very good. Jeff, that got Jeff to... M0307 says Jeff, Jessica Jones vodka. vodka. Which is pretty funny. Oh, that is true. That is pretty dead on. Yeah. Also, a very recently, a very good issue of Jessica Jones, if you're caught up, by the way. Oh, I needed the digital only? Yeah, the, oh, it was, I had a lot of fun. Yep. I want to have you back and ask you all about formatting stuff. And since you have that behind-the-counter experience, like, I want to ask, like, has digital changed this? Now you're selling direct to the consumers, but well, I, we, yeah. we need more time. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what. Uh, I did uh, put a lot of thought into the names. Uh, I knew that people retailers were going to order batman and in order to get to batman you were going to have to go through the a's <laughs> so i knew that i was going to be at the top of everyone's no sincerely and no. also and also uh, comic shops right uh, in a perfect world you start out and all the comics are next to each other uh, and then as you run out of shelf space your comic starts to disappear behind someone else's comic here it goes disappearing, but the um, but but yeah. So the analog was there, and then I thought you could. Uh, Dead Rabbit was actually John's suggestion, but I loved it because it fit the look. And then I was like, maybe they'll put it next to maybe retailers would stock it next to Deadpool. Mm -hmm. and ah. Use that as an on ramp. So we put but, it with the indies, but you're with Deadly Class and Dead Body Road. This is, right. and this like is literally the same thing we did in anime. Like like yeah. literally, we would come up with like slightly different names for titles to get them in the right letter. This is <laughs> really a thing. Oh, I don't even know what that is. This no, is I would come back any time. Thank you for having me. And, yeah. you know, we, uh, s such thoughtful questions and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm uh, local, so I'll, I'll come back sometime. Yes. Yeah, we would love that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely love that. Do you have any, like, upcoming convention appearances? We're kind of out of season, but, like, anything you'd want people to know about? Yes. Uh, I am, actually, I'm sort of going on tour. I, uh, I'm going to uh, New York for Marvel, and then I'm sticking around and doing... New York Comic Con, mm. and then I'm using mm -hmm. that uh, on October 3rd, both Dead Rabbit 1 and Analog Volume 1 come out, so I'm going to sign up and down the East Coast, and then I'm going to go over to London, sign up for Bin Planet, and go to Big Bang. Uh, That's at the end Dublin. of October? Yeah, so all, most of October I'm on the road. You'll be at both of those I was shows. About, well, I don't know, I think I might be at a different London show, I'll have to double check. Oh, okay. oh it's not a show, I'm sorry, it's a, just a shop. Just a shop. I'm just really doing gotcha. a Gotcha. But I will shop. be at New York Comic Con. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, well, I'll, I'll be at New York Comic Con. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. be at New York Comic Con. Yeah. And you should go to New York Comic Con. Are you going to New York, York Comic Con? I would like to, it's a little, I, I, we'll that's maybe. Um, I'll, I'll be there for my birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, October 1st. Thank you so my much 40th. for joining us. Thank you uh, so much. Check out Wally Wood's work. Check out Marie Stephan's work. Get excited for me to go on about that some more. Uh, and please pick up Dead Rabbit when it comes out next month. And mm -hmm. Analog, pick up analog singles or those Infinity collect. Wars is amazing. And maybe you might enjoy some enormous, amazing Marvel cosmic adventures. And Oh, and Flo Steinberg, when you do Marie, oh, not, yeah. to, not to lump the women together, but just when you, as, as you're making sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's an important person, too. 
hyper important. And you just told us about a wonderful close time for Keith Trick, which I'm really excited because I hadn't realized. We're 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 about to have yeah, to. Yeah, we gotta have, yep. we have to throw. We're, we're gonna have to throw to Weave because. Oh, that's right. Weave is coming. Elise is coming back Elise's to coming GM back. the second Aww. half of her amazing space adventure that we're gonna do tonight. Uh, so please stay tuned for Weave and thank you so much. Welcome back to the Wednesday Club. Oh, uh, it's so, so good nice to be to back. Be back. It's so uh, good to be back. You guys are still. You're dead at Burning Man. Oh yeah. yeah. Your neurons are firing. Yeah. This is my astral form. Yeah. yeah this is yeah, this is all that's left. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Goodbye, we'll see you next everybody. week. Thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it.